Amen. God bless all your ministers. Amen. Mungu awabariki wahudumu wote. I know it's a great challenge for us. Najua ni changamoto kubwa kwetu. Brother Branham's ministry was to reconcile men back to God. Huduma ya ndugu Branham ilikuwa ni kuwapatanisha watu kwa Mungu. And we know that ministry comes from Calvary. Na hebu tujue kwamba huduma inatoka Calvary. Because Jesus died to reconcile men back to God. Kwa sababu Yesu alikufa kuwapatanisha watu warudi kwa Mungu. So after Brother Branham died, baada ndugu Branham kufa, it's our responsibility ni majukumu yetu sasa to reconcile men back to God. Kuwapatanisha watu kurudi kwa Mungu. Uh, we are not looking for big numbers. Hatutafuti watu wengi. Big churches. Makanisa makubwa. Uh, We want to make sure every boy, every girl, tunataka kuhakikisha kila mvulana kila msichana, every mother, kila mama, every person gets kila mtu anapata from the pastor, anapata kutoka kwa mchungaji, to stabilize them, anakuwa na uthabiti, and anchor them in the revelation. Na anatia nanga kwenye ufunuo. So that they can make eternity their home. Ili waweze kufika umileleni kama nyumbani kwao. Now we thank God that he made us part of the anointed word for this day. Sasa tunamshukuru Mungu ametufanya amefanya tuwe sehemu ya neno lililotiwa mafuta ya siku hii. We as God's attributes. Sisi ni sifa za Mungu. We are here to honor the word. Tuko hapa kuheshimu neno and to bring glory to God. Na kuleta utukufu kwa Mungu. All of God's attributes. Sifa zote za Mungu. We are here in the flesh. Tuko hapa katika mwili to honor the word. Kuliheshimu neno sisi kama sifa give za Mungu. God all the glory. Na kumpatia Mungu utukufu wote. Brother Branham said Jesus Christ means Ndugu Branham anasema Yesu Kristo inamaanisha the anointed one. Yeye aliyetiwa mafuta. Through that anointed one kupitia huyo aliyetiwa mafuta now we have an anointed people sasa tuna watu waliotiwa mafuta that wengi that means the mystical body of the lord jesus christ hiyo inamaanisha mwili wa kisiri wa yesu kristo an anointed mystical body ni mwili uliotiwa mafuta kisiri the true bride of jesus christ bibi harusi wa kweli wa yesu kristo has some responsibility ana ana wajibu we have some unfinished work kuna kazi isiyomalizika inayotupasa kufanywa. Kumalizia kazi ambayo Yesu kamwe hakuimaliza. He left some work for us to finish. Up. Aliacha baadhi ya kazi sisi tuzimalizie. You can go and read your church ages. Unaweza kusoma kwenye Juma ya nyakati saba za kanisa. Ukurasa wa 172. The, the, the church has got a work to do. Kanisa lina kazi ya kufanya. But she cannot do that work. Lakini kanisa liweze kufanya hiyo kazi until she becomes the word. Mpaka kanisa lifanyike neno. Because Jesus Christ was the word. Kwa sababu Yesu Kristo alikuwa neno liliyofanyika mwili. And he continued the work. Na aliendelea kazi. And he left some work for the bride na to do. Akaacha kazi ili bibi harusi aje afanye. At a specific time katika wakati maalumu so the bride needs to reach the time kwa bibi harusi anapaswa kufika wakati where the flesh becomes the world ambapo mwili unafanyika neno to continue that ministry ili ile huduma iendelee it's not just about being in the message sio tu kuwa kwenye ujumbe we gonna lose our vision tutapoteza ono letu we gonna lose the thought tutapoteza lile wazo brother Branham said ndugu Branham alisema when jesus went to the grave yesu alipoenda kaburini he went down as a bridegroom alienda kaburini kama bwana harusi but when he rose up lakini alipofufuka he rose up as the bride form alifufuka kama bibi harusi now we all know that the seals is christ sasa wote tunajua kwamba mihuri ni And Kristo. This day when the seventh seal broke, na siku hii mihuri saba ilipovunjwa, it revealed Christ in bright form. Ilimfunua Kristo katika umbo la bibi harusi. We saw Christ in bright form. Tulimuona Kristo katika umbo la bibi harusi. Of which brother Branham was the first sheep. Ambaye huyo Kristo ndugu Branham ndiye alikuwa mganda wake wa kwanza. Ambao ulitikiswa juu ya watu. And he said, naye alisema There's much more brothers coming Kuna after me. Kuna wengine wengi wanakuja baada yangu. And those are the bright material. Na hao ni chembe au ni, ma, ni vifaa vya bibi harusi. That we are expected to see. Ambao tunategemea kuona. Are we here? Je, tuko hapa? The message of Malachi 4. Ujumbe wa Malachi 4 is a son of man 
ni mwana wa Adam revealing the son of man akimfunua yule mwana wa Adam that was a revelation of Jesus Christ huo ndio ufunuo ulikuwa ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo that was a mystery of revelation 107 hiyo ndio ilikuwa fumbo la ufunuo 17 in the days of the voice of the seventh angel katika siku za sauti ya malaika wa saba when he shall begin to sound atakapoanza kupiga baraguni when he shall begin to sound atakapoanza kupiga baraguni when he shall begin to sound atakapoanza kupiga baraguni the mystery of god siri au fumbo la mungu should be finished litamalizika but that mystery of god hilo fumbo siri ya mungu not finished in brother brenan's time kumalizika wakati wa ndugu brenan that's why the bible say ndio sababu biblia inasema that mystery should be finished hiyo siri itapaswa kumalizika but it was not finished ambayo haikumalizika because the bride kwa sababu bibi harusi you and me wewe na mimi is part of the same mystery ni sehemu ya hiyo siri ya ufumbo we are the completion of that mystery sisi ndio kumalizika kwa hiyo siri without us bila sisi that mystery is not complete hiyo siri haijamalizika bado so the bride's ministry kwa huduma bibi harusi is a continuation ni mwendelezo of a son of man wa mwana wa adam revealing the son of man akimfunua yule mwana wa adam can i get an amen je naweza kupata amina the bible say biblia inasema he that received a prophet yeye ampokee nabii in the name of a prophet kwa jina la nabii shall receive a prophet reward atapokea thawabu ya nabii not he that believed a prophet sio yule amwaminie nabii but he that received a prophet lakini yeye ampokee nabii in the name of a prophet kwa jina la nabii shall receive a prophet reward atapokea thawabu ya nabii so the same anointing kwa hiyo upako wao wa John Malachi Paul kwa jua Malachi must be on the bright unaenda juu ya bibi harusi continue the work kuendelea hiyo kazi that Jesus left behind ambao Yesu aliacha for a special time kwa ajili ya wakati maalum a specific time wakati maalum and there is nothing else but this time na hakuna wakati mwingine ila ni hiyo we facing the rapture now Tumefika kwenye unyakuo sana. Tuko karibu sana kwenye unyakuo. Je, tuko hapa? The message of Malachi 4. Ujumbe wa Malachi 4. He was the mystery of God wrapped in a prophet. Ilikuwa ni siri ya Mungu iliyofichwa ndani ya nabii. He was God wrapped in a prophet. Ilikuwa ni Mungu amefungwa ndani ya nabii. Now we got that all clear. Je, tumeipata hiyo ikiwa dhahiri? Malachi 4 is. Tunajua Malachi ni nini? Is revelation. Kama ukikosa huo ufunuo, you're going to miss all the other revelation. Utakosa ufunuo mwingine wote. Brother Bernard told us. Ndugu Bernard alituambia, the deity of Jesus Christ. Uungu wa Yesu Kristo. The God of mystery. Siri au fumbo la kichwa cha Mungu. The deity of Jesus Christ. Uungu wa Yesu Kristo is the greatest revelation. Ni ufunuo mkubwa kuliko wote. So if you got that revelation who that man was. Kwa ukipata ufunuo yule mtu alikuwa ni nani? You will see all the other revelation. Ndipo after that revelation. Ndipo utaona mafunuo mengine baada ya huo ufunuo. Because all the other revelation. Kwa sababu mafunuo mengine connected to that revelation. Yanaunganika na huo ufunuo mmoja. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Now the message of Malachi 4. Sasa ujumbe wa Malachi 4. It came to turn the hearts of the children. Ulikuja kugeuza mioyo ya watoto. Listen not everybody. Sikiza sikila mtu. It came to turn the hearts of only the children. Alikuja kugeuza mioyo ya watoto pekee. Lot of people are in the message. Sio watu walio kwenye ujumbe. That doesn't mean they are children. Haimaanishi walio kwenye ujumbe wote ni watoto. The message ndani ya ujumbe there are children of god kuna watoto wa mungu the message of the hour ujumbe wa saa malachi 4 came to turn the hearts of the children ulikuja kugeuza mioyo ya watoto back to the pentecostal fathers kurudi kwa mababa wa kipentecostal back to the pentecostal feet 
kurudi kwa imani ya Pentecoste. Now he says in the church age. Sasa anasema kwa nyakati sababu za kanisa. 327 328 As the pastor said the other day Those seven tenders are in the seven seals Hizo nguruma saba ziko ndani ya mihuri saba Now brother Brandon say Sasa ndugu Brandon alisema It will take these divinely revealed mystery truths Itagarimu hizi siri au mafumbo ya ki, ya, ya kisiri yaliyofunuliwa kiungu ambao yako ndani ya mihuri literally turn the hearts of the children ambao kwa hakika au kwa kwa dhahiri itageuza mioyo ya watoto the power of the revelation sorry The power of the revelation that is in the shields ambayo iko ndani ya mihuri literally turn us back itageuza itatugeuza hakika to the original faith kwenye imani halisi to our fathers kwa baba zetu to the original church kwa kanisa la asili that was the church that god created hilo ndio ilikuwa kanisa ambayo mungu aliunda that is your original church na hiyo ndio kanisa halisi now why sasa kwa nini must the messenger come with a message kwa nini lazima mjumbe aje na ujumbe to turn the hearts of the children kugeuza mioyo ya watoto back there kurudi kule to the original revival kwa ufufuo wa asili that was the original revival ule ulikuwa uamsho wa asili down through the ages kupitia nyakati zote we lost that revival tulipoteza ule uamsho but in time lakini wakati wa mwisho send the prophet mungu anamtuma na mimi the revelation of the way akiwa na ufunuo wa neno and the heart of the children goza mioyo ya watoto back to the original kurudi asili Hallelujah. 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 Are you here? Je mko hapa? To revive kuamsha means to to wake something that you already got. Inamaanisha kuamsha kitu fulani ndani yako ambacho tayari unacho. You came to revive alikuja kuamsha kitu ambacho wewe unacho tayari ambacho tayari unacho sio kitu kipya lakini kiko ndani yako gone cold gone cold gone cold Mungu aliita the revelation of the word ufunuo wa neno came to revive you ulikuja kukuamsha because you are the revival kwa sababu wewe ndiyo uamshe take us back to pentecost unarudi pentecost because without the holy ghost sabira na mtakatifu there is no revival hakuna uamsho he said the holy spirit is here alisema roho mtakatifu uko hapa kuhuisha make life kufanya hai that predestinated seed ile mbegu hiyo kusudiwa kidogo ambayo inaenda kwenye unyakuo the holy ghost is here roho mtakatifu uko hapa kuisha make a life kufanya hai that predestinated seed ile mbegu hiyo kusudiwa kidogo is going in the rapture ambayo inaenda kwenye unyakuo there's no dead people going in the rapture hakuna watu waliokufa people are going in the rapture watu wafu hawaendi kwenye unyakuo people are going in the rapture watu wafu wanaenda kwenye unyakuo people that can run watu wanaweza kukimbia watu wanaweza kuruka people that can say hallelujah watu wanaweza kusema hallelujah going in the rapture how do you know the spirits here roho mtakatifu uko hapa kufanya hai predestinated hiyo mbegu ile kusudiwa kimbeo sio mtu mwingine yote amen that's why when we come together ndio maana tunapokuja pamoja there must be a revival lazima kuwe na uamsho in every church there must be a revival kwenye kila kanisa lazima kuwe na uamsho not because it's a convention yet sio kwa sababu ni mkutano hapa no, we, we don't want that hatuhitaji uamsho wa aina hiyo hatu Mungu hakusema hivyo hatukubali hiyo what does thou ya elijah unasikiza nini ewe elia he said we don't need this Unafanya nini Elia? He says we don't need this kind of revivals now. Alisema hatuhitaji aina hizi za mwiamsho sasa. Ambapo kwamba tukusalika pamoja, a little up 
surprise. Na kuna tokea labda msisimko fulani. And one week later we die. Now baada ya wiki moja tumekufa. He said we don't need Hollywood revival. Tuhitaji uamshi wa siku moja wa aina hiyo. Because the seven seal has opened now. Kwa sababu ulisema mfunuo sasa. The revelation of the word. Huo ufunuo wa neno. Quickened by the spirit. Huyo huishi wa roho. Gives you a permanent revival. Unakupa uamshi wa kudumu. Brother your age doesn't change your revival. Mahali popote ulipo haibadilishi wewe mtu. Hear what he says here. Umri wako haubadilishi wa mwisho. Amen. Amina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the revelation of the word. Ufunuo alisema ufunuo wa neno. That brings a revival to us in this day. Ndio unaoleta wa mwisho kwetu katika siku hii. And you can't stop this revival. Na huwezi kuzuia huo mwisho. The revival that will put us in the rapture. Huu ni wa mwisho nataka tukuweka kwenye unyakuo. But it must have a starting point. Lakini lazima kuwe na sehemu ya kuanzia. Why is he going back to Pentecost? Sasa wakati narudi Pentecost. Because Pentecost is the foundation. Kwa sababu Pentecost ni msingi. Brother we must go back to the original foundation. Ndugu lazima turudi kwenye msingi wetu wa follow the message. Tufuate ujumbe. We have a foundation. Lazima uwe na msingi. To come right into the shields. Ndipo uende hadi kwenye mihuri. If you got no foundation. Kama huna msingi, you can't reach the level of the seven seals. Huwezi kufika kiwango cha mihuri saba. It came to take you back to the original foundation. Ndio maana alikuja kukurudisha kwenye msingi wa asili kwanza. You must start on the original foundation. Lazima urudi kwenye msingi wa asili. Yeah what he said. Yeah what he said. Na skiza alichosema. He says Pentecost is the clearance house. Alisema Pentecost ni nyumba ya ni, ni nyumba ya kuzaa usafi. That means brother. That means Hiyo inamaanisha when we get to Pentecost. Tunapofika Pentecost everything that God had against us. Kila kitu ambacho Mungu alikuwa nacho kinyume na sisi. He stretch it off kinaondolewa and he gives you the holy ghost na anakupatia roho mtakatifu he takes you back to the foundation anakurudisha kwenye msingi because without the foundation so bila msingi you will never understand the mysteries of god utaelewa siri za mungu so everything that god had against you kwa sababu kwa hiyo kila kitu mungu alichokuwa nacho dhidi yako wewe clears that up anakiondoa and he gives you the holy ghost na anakupatia roho mtakatifu but in this day sasa siku hii ya bride clearance house kwa hiyo siku hii nyumba ya bibi harusi ya usafi was the land's book of life ilikuwa kitabu cha uzima cha manakondo when god opened that book mungu alipofunua hicho kitabu the revival started now hiyo uamsho sasa ukaanza and i'm here to remind you brother na tuko hapa kukukumbusha that this is an eternal revival kwamba huu ni uamsho wa milele it's not just here sio hapa tu it's there It's there. Kama ni uko pale, uko pale, uko pale. Time we gather. Kila wakati tukishirika. It's a time. Ni wakati wa uamshio. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not because it's a convention. Sio kwa sababu ni mkutano. Every service is a convention. Kila ibada ni mkutano. Brother Brandon puts it like this. Ndugu Brana mna iweka namna hii. He says the 7th seal. Anasema muhuri wa saba. Like this. Uko namna hii. He says one star. Anasema nyota moja. Breaks into five stars. Inapasuka na, ku, that, na kutoa nyota tano. And that five star. Na hizi nyota tano. Breaks into another five stars. Zinapasuka kila moja moja na tano star. zingine. Na tano zingine. And it goes on and on. Na inaendelea na kuendelea kuendelea. Mwaka kwenye umilele that one star lakini hiyo nyota moja messenger for this day ilikuwa mjumbe wa siku hii seven stars that was in the hands of the lord jesus christ kwa sababu nyota saba zilikuwa mkononi mwa yesu kristo in each age there was a star kwa kila wakati kulikuwa na nyota moja but the star that appeared in this age lakini nyota hiyo tokea wakati huo he died alipokufa there will be a fivefold ministry lazima kuwa na nyota tano ni mwaka tano in line with the word ambazo tamfanya bibi harusi akae mtari wa neno Nipo ndio maana ni kufa. Mungu anainua watu wengine. Huduma ya mikunja mitano. Say what the prophet said. Ambao zitasema nabii alichosema. Explain with the message of the hour. Ambao watadumu na ujumbe wa saa. Because it's not the prophet's word. Kwa sababu sio neno la nabii. Did you understand that? Je, mnaelewa hilo? 
Let me make it more plain so the younger people can understand. When Moses died, God rose up Joshua. And he said to Joshua, You're going to take the children of Israel right into the promised land. And bear position them. Exactly how those mothers gave birth to the children. You will place them by revelation. God, the Creator, is talking to Joshua. He said, Meditate on what my servant said. Tafakari. Whatever Moses said, don't go left. Don't go right. Stay with what Moses said. The Creator is telling a man, stay with a man's word. That was not Moses that wrote that. Yule hakuwa Musa aliyeandika Almighty God. Ile ilikuwa ni neno la Mungu mwezi. God will not point a man to a man. Mungu hatamuelekeza mtu kwa mtu. But this man, lakini huyu mtu. Haleluya. Glory. You see that Unaona? that appearance of the pillar of fire in the cloud. Kutokea kwa nguzo ya moto na wingu it had nothing to do with Israel. Haihusiani kwa wingu na Israeli. That pillar of fire and that cloud, ile nguzo ya wingu na nguzo ya moto, it had something to do with the messenger. Ilikuwa inahusiana na mjumbe. It had something to do with Moses. Ilikuwa na jambo fulani na Musa. And brother Branham said, Na ndugu Branham alisema, after the appearance of the pillar of fire, baada ya kuonekana kwa nguzo ya moto, you go read the unveiling of God. Wewe nenda kasome ujumbe wa kufunuliwa kwa Mungu. In Mount Sinai, alisema kule kwenye mlima Sinai, he says Moses, alisema Musa, entered into the pillar of fire. Aliingia ndani ya nguzo ya moto. As Moses, kama Musa, Moses entered as Moses. Musa aliingia kwenye nguzo ya moto kama Musa. But when he came back, lakini alipotoka as a word in Moses. Ilikuwa ni neno ndani ya Musa. That's why they, the people had to feel themselves. Ndio maana ilibidi waweke ta, utaji kwenye nyuso zao. Now that pillar of fire. Kwa sababu ile nguzo ya moto entered Moses. Iliingia ndani ya Musa. When he went into the land of Egypt. Sasa Alipoenda Misri, he was not dealing with the Israelite people. Hakuwa anashughulikia na Israeli kama watu. But he was dealing with Pharaoh. Lakini yeye alikuwa anashughulika na Pharaoh. When he said to Pharaoh, aliposema kwa Pharaoh, "Let my people go." Ruhusi watu wangu waondoke. Was Moses speaking. Haikuwa ni Musa akinena. It was Jehovah. Alikuwa Jehovah. He was a creator. Alikuwa muumbaji. Telling Pharaoh Akimwambia Farao my people go Atilia watu wangu waondoke Now because Pharaoh was an unbeliever Sasa kwa sababu Sara alikuwa he never understood that Kwa sababu Farao alikuwa si amini Message is not for unbelievers Ujumbe sio kwa asiamini Message is for believers Ujumbe ni kwa waaminio And even this message Na sasa hata ujumbe huu is only for eagles Ni kwa ajili ya waaminio tu God calls himself an eagle. Ni kwa ajili ya tai tu. He calls the prophets his eagles. Mungu alituma tai kwa sababu nabii ni tai. He calls his children eagles. Na anawaita watoto wake tai. We are a eagle family. Kwa hii ni familia ya tai. He says if you are an eagle. If you are an eagle. Kama wewe ni tai, you will understand this message. Utaelewa huu ujumbe. But if you are not an eagle, kama wewe you will never understand this message. Utaweza kuelewa huu ujumbe. You'll find a lot of faults here. Utakuta makosa mengi kwenye ujumbe. No faults here. Lakini hakuna makosa hata hivyo. Hallelujah. You get right. Je, tuko hapa? You see Moses. Unaona Musa took sin. Alichukua mchanga and he said let there be flies. Na akasema hebu kuwe na Who was it? Yule alikuwa nani? Who was it? Yule alikuwa nani? Let there be, let there be. Na iwe, na iwe, na iwe. Who was there? Who 
huyu alikuwa nani? Was it a man? Sio mtu. It was God heaven and earth. He was a man. Akikaa ndani ya mtu. Hallelujah. Brother, ndugu, I want you to understand. Nataka muelewe. God said to Joshua kwamba Mungu alimwambia Joshua, you want to be successful. Kama unataka kufanikiwa, don't move from what Moses said. Usiondoke kutoka kwenye kile Musa alisema. Stay exactly in line. Kaa hivyo hivyo kwenye mstari. Don't move this way that way. Usiende njia hiyo. Don't listen to new revelations. Usisikize mafunuo mapya. There is no new light. Hakuna nuru mpya. Stay on course. Kaa kwenye mstari. Hallelujah. When the apostle Paul Mtume Paulo met a pillar of fire. Hata yeye alikutana na nguzo ya moto. And you watch Paul. Hebu mtazame Paulo. Later on he say. Mbeleni akasema. In Galatians 8 verse 1. Kwa Galatia 8:1. Or Galatians 1 verse 8. Au Galatia 1:8. He said my brother. Alisema ndugu yangu. My sister. Ndugu dada yangu. If anybody kama mtu yote anybody mtu yote even if it is an angel hata awe malaika come from heaven atoke mbinguni and teach you anything different na awafundishe chochote tofauti that angel mradi huyo malaika you stay by what i said nie kaeni na nilichosema paul mungu the holy ghost roho mtakatifu the pillar of fire nguzo ya moto what did paul iliingia ndani ya paulo and what he wrote na kile alichoandika what god said amen kilikuwa ni mungu alichosema amina and when it came to our day na alipokuja kwenye siku yetu pillar of fire nguzo ya moto tena and a cloud appeared na wingu likatokea now all of you look at the pillar of fire sasa hebu watu tuangalie nguzo ya moto alisimama pale supernatural language wale wanaoelewa lugha ya kimbinguni ah the book of isaiah isaiah kitabu cha isaiah somewhere 42 or 40 somewhere kitu he says the hand of the lord has been stretched una alisema mkono wa bwana umenyooshwa who is able to pull that hand back ni nani anaweza kurudisha mkono the hand of the lord has been stretched mkono wa bwana umenyooshwa who is able to pull that hand ni nani anaweza kurudisha ule mkono Now if you look at the picture carefully. Hebu tazama hiyo picha. I can't reach there. Siwezi kufika pale. Lakini ni sehemu hii ya mkono hii hapa iliyovimba hapa. Iko hivi. Sehemu hii look there carefully. Tazama pale kwa makini. Hallelujah. Glory. God hand mkono wa Mungu ulikuwa juu ya nabii and if that wind was upon the prophet na ndio maana ilikuwa juu ya nabii it upon the people that believe the prophet haikuwa mchoyo uliokuwa juu ya nabii ulikuwa ni mkono ukiwa juu ya watu skiza ule mkono uliokuwa juu ya nabii ndio uko juu ya watu sasa hivi. Haleluya. Now that's why brother Brenham could tell us. Ndio sababu ndugu Brenham angetuambia. He said brother sister. Alisema ndugu dada. All my life. Maisha yangu yote. I hid the pillar of fire in my heart. Nilificha nguzo ya moto moyoni mwangu. So when he spoke kwa aliponena God spoke Mungu ndiye alinena When God spoke Mungu alipodena Prophet spoke Nabii alinena That's why he told all of us Ndio maana alituambia sisi sote Stay by what I said Semeni nilichosema Don't leave what I said Don't leave what I said Nisiache nilichosema Listen what he said Skiza alichosema In the feast of the trumpets Kwenye ujumbe sikukuu ya baragumu He says all children of the light Alisema wana wote wa nuru What a wonderful light Ni nuru ya ajabu jinsi gani He said listen Alisema sikiza listen. Sikiza Don't miss this Usikose hii Don't ever leave this light Usiache kama usiache hii nuru. Keep walking in the light. Endea kutembea kwenye hii nuru. Believe this light. 
Usiache hii mimi. Don't listen to your pastor. Usimsikize mchungaji wako. Listen to nobody. Usimsikize yeyote. You keep walking in the light. Wewe endelea kutembea kwenye nuru. He says you watch that light. Na ndipo alisema tazama hiyo nuru. And fall. Ikijifunua and reveal itself. Na ikijifunua yenyewe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Brother Brennan's time, katika wakati wa mkubwa na that light unfolded his ministry. Ile nuru ilifungua huduma yake. And he went off the scene. Na akaondoka jukwaa. And we were told to walk in the same light. Na sisi tuliambiwa tutembe kwenye nuru hiyo. Walk in the light. Tutakadi na nuru ya nuru. That light. Wewe unapotembea kwenye nuru itazama hiyo nuru. Itajifunua. Reveal itself. Na kujifungua yenyewe. Now that's why some people think that I, they call me brother Brennan's disciple. Ndio maana baadhi ya watu wanaita mimi mwanafunzi wa Brother Brennan. Because I for nobody and nothing. Kwa sababu simsikizi mtu yeyote au chochote. I came in the message with a pillar of fire. Nilikuja kwenye ujumbe na nguzo ya moto. I'm still burning with the fire till now. Na bado ninachomeka na moto na waka na moto mpaka sasa. I meet people after 20 years. Nakutana watu baada ya miaka 20. They tell me pastor you still preach like you started in the beginning. Wananiambia mchungaji bado unahubiri kama vile vile ulianza. That's what Jesus wanted a bride for. I nasema hivyo ndivyo Yesu alivyotaka bibi harusi awe. Everything else will change. Kingine chochote kitabadilika. Jesus never changed. Lakini Yesu habadiliki. Everything else change. Kingine chochote kitabadilika. But the word never change. Lakini neno halibadilika. That's why he wants a word bright. Ndio maana anataka bibi harusi neno. He wants you up today. Hataki uwe juu leo. Down tomorrow. Chini kesho. Oh, he wants you to be the same. Anataka uwe juu leo. Kwa sababu yeye yuko hivyo hivyo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we here? Praise God. Je, tuko hapa? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Kwa Mungu. So you see the opening of the word. Kwa na kufunguliwa kwa neno. The revealing of the word. Na kufunguliwa kwa neno. Now started a seven seal revival. Sasa kulianzisha uamshi wa muhuri wa saba. Uanzi uamshi wa mihuri saba. Now please understand my language. Tafadhali eleweni lugha yangu. I'm speaking the prophet's language. Ninanena lugha ya nabii. I sleep with the books. Ninalala na vitabu. Uh, sorry brother sister. Samani ndugu dada. Ukinipa kompyuta hata sijui namna kuiwasha. Hata sijui jinsi ya kutumia kompyuta. Siogopi au sioni haya kukwambia. Elimu yangu ni mpaka darasa la nane. Nikihitaji jumbe. Inabidi nikae masaa mengi magotini. Nikimuuliza Mungu nimehitaji bibi harusi nini? Na ninapotoka magotini, kila kitabu kule ndani kinafunguka. Na ninaanza kuandika. Naanza kuandika. Naanza kuandika. Naandika. Then I call my daughter. Halafu nampigia simu binti yangu. Halafu namwambia unaweza ukaniprintia hizi nukuu. Na anaziprint zinakuwa kama anazichapisha zinakuwa hivi. Kama mimi niki, nikifika nikaenda kwenye kompyuta. Sijui nitaanzia wapi. Kwa yeye anazichapisha namna hii na kuja kanisani na nahubiri sina shida na wandugu ambao wana elimu zaidi lakini elimu yako haihitajiki kwenye huu ujumbe Brother Branham was an uneducated man. Ndugu Branham alikuwa mtu asiye na elimu. That's why this message is a supernatural message. Ndio maana huu ujumbe ni ujumbe wa kiungu. So you have to go back to the foundation. Kwa hiyo inapaswa urudi kwenye msingi. Now listen to this. Sikiliza hii. Our blessings baraka zetu is not in Tanzania. Haziko Tanzania. It is not in South Africa. Haziko Afrika Kusini. It is not in Congo. Haziko Congo. It is not in Nairobi. Haziko Nairobi. Our blessings baraka zetu is in Jesus Christ. Ziko ndani ya Yesu Kristo. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul says, "Mtume Paulo alisema, He had blessed us. 
Yeye ametubariki with all spiritual blessing. Na baraka zote za kiroho. All spiritual baraka zote za kiroho. In Christ Jesus. Ndani ya Kristo Yesu. When you get in there, ukiingia hapo, your blessing is not limited. Baraka zako hazina kikomo. You are not only a singer. Wewe sio tu You are not only a singer. Wewe sio tu mwimbaji. You can see visions. Unaweza kuona maoni. You can speak in tongues. Unaweza kunena kwa lugha. You can prophesy. Unaweza kutoa nabii. Inside of Jesus Christ. Ndani ya Yesu Kristo. You are in the Shekina glory. Uko ndani utukufu wa Shekina. When you enter the Shekina. Ukiingia ndani ya Shekina. You are not limited. Who who are carrying kikomo? All your pastor brothers. All your pastor brothers. Ninyi wote wa ndugu wa ubiri. Mkiingia hapo. Not only a pastor. Nyie sio wachungaji tu. Sometimes you can be a prophet. Wakati mwingine unaweza kuwa ni bibi. Stand up brother. Stand up sister. Ukamwambia huyu ndugu hivi, "Bado wewe je tuko hapa? Your blessing is unlimited." Baraka zako hazina kikomo. Sometimes you can be a teacher. Wakati mwingine unaweza kuwa mwalimu. You open your Bible. Fungua Biblia yako. Then you start teaching. Unafungua Biblia yako unaanza kufundisha. Kwa wewe ni mwalimu. Wewe ni nabii. Wewe ni mchungaji. Hafu wewe ni mwinjilisti. Siku moja unaweza kufunga Biblia. Na ukahubiria watu sasa. Utukufu wa Shekina. Ndugu dada Sikiza kwa makini kile ninachosema In fellowship by redemption Kwenye ujumbe naitwa ushirika kwa ukombozi Our starting point in the message must be right Nilianza kwa kuelekeza ujumbe lazima uwe sahihi Now that's the reason today you find all over the world Hiyo ndio sababu leo unapata ulimwenguni kote people are collapsing Watu wanaanguka because the foundation was not right kwa sababu msingi haukuwa sahihi they never go to the foundation hawakuenda kwenye msingi and start with the holy ghost na kuanza na roho mtakatifu right let's go hebu twende fellowship by redemption ushirika kwa ukombozi cain came out of adam's first idea cain came out would Adam's first idea and made himself a religion Kain alikuja na wazo la kwanza la Adam na akajifanyia dini akaifishikiza kwa majani ya But they found out that it wasn't God's appropriate way Lakini tunajua hilo haikuwa njia sahihi ya Mungu Therefore they could not stand in his presence Ndio sababu asingeweza kuvumilia uwepo wake And today we still use self sufficiency Na leo bado tunatumia kujitosheleza wenyewe Wrong quotation Sio nukuu yenyewe Let me read the right quotation Ngoja nisome nukuu yenyewe Where are we Tuko wapi Let me read the right quotation. Ngoja nisome nukuu sahihi hapa. Sometimes I have the same problem with my daughter too. Wakati mwingine napata shida hii na binti yangu. I tell her put this coat she put another coat. Namwambia weka nukuu hii anaweka nyingine. But I make sure I carry my own books and go. Lakini na nahakisha nabeba vitabu vyangu vya. So if a quotation is wrong my book is still. Kama akawa ameweka ambayo sio yenyewe inachukua kitabu sasa. Okay, fellowship by redemption. Okay, ushirika kwa ukombozi. 1955. Mwaka 55. 0403. Mwezi wa 4 tarehe 3. Right. He says listen. Para 130. I don't care how much you join church. Sijali kwa ji, kwa ni kwa wingi jisikie unajiunga kanisa. How many good things you do. Mambo gani mazuri unafanya? Them all is fine. Hayo yote ni sawa. You buy the widow coal. Uko karibu na na Una una unawanulia mkao wa jana yes. when she's cold wakati akiwa anasikia baridi you buy a food when she's hungry unamnulia chakula akiwa na njaa you take the little kids off the street unachukua wale watoto yatima mitaani that's good hiyo ni sawa nothing to say light of that 
Hakuna kitu cha kusema kuhusu hilo. But my brother sister. Lakini ndugu yangu dada. You are a miserable being. Wewe ni kiume cha cha kutia huruma cha ovyo ovyo. Until that old foundation is swept out. Mpaka ule msingi wa kale umefagiwa. All together. Wote kabisa. And you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Na ufanyike kiumbe kipya ndani ya Kristo Yesu. In order for that soul ili hiyo nafsi to be in contact with God for fellowship. Iwe na mahusiano na Mungu kwa ajili ya ushirika. Now you see? Je, unaona hilo? Did the message of the hour ujume wa saa come to take us back to the foundation? Unakuja kuturudisha kwenye msingi. Because with that old foundation kwa sababu na huu msingi wa kale we were going to church. Tunaenda kanisa. We were serving God. Tunamtumikia Mungu. But we had no victory. Lakini hatukuwa na ushindi. We were still miserable. Bado tulikuwa watu wa ovyo ovyo. Sometimes even when we came to church, wakati mwingine tukija kanisani, with our wives na wake zetu we were fighting in the car tuna, tuna, tuna gombana kwenye gari and when we come to church tukifika kanisani the man gone sit right in the front yule mtu alikuwa anagombana na mke wake anakaa mbele and the wife is sitting right in the na back na mke anakaa nyuma kule we were living miserable tunaishi maisha ya ajabu stand we were living miserable je tunaelewa tuko tunaishi maisha ya ajabu reaching mercy mungu mwingi wa rehema hold us Alituvuta. He don't want us to be living like that. Alituambia hataki kuishi hivyo. Back to that old foundation. Na tuirudi kwenye msingi wa kale. Rid of that old foundation. Na tuondoe huu msingi wa zamani. Get that foundation out. Tuondoe huu msingi. Get the new birth. Kwa kuzaliwa upya. Get the Holy Ghost. Tupate Roho Mtakatifu. Until you become a new creature. Mpaka ufanyike kiumbe kipya. So that ili kwamba your soul nafsi yako can be in contact inaweza kuwasiliana na muumbaji wake now you take a brother or a sister sasa wewe mchukue ndugu au dada is in contact with god ambaye ana mawasiliano na mungu you tell them let's pray mwambie tuombe you can never stop them to pray Huwezi kuwazuia watu wa jinsi hiyo wasiombe. Huwezi kuwazuia. Wanaweza kuomba na kuomba na kuomba. Endelea ndugu weka nuku nyingine. Tuendelee kusoma nuku hiyo hiyo chini kidogo. Tuone anachosema hapo. Hapo hapo. Ndugu dada tafadhali wote tuelewe Unaona kama kuna kitu fulani kuhusu kuomba Halo Halo Sijui kuhusu wewe Lakini nakwambia kuhusu mimi Kuna kitu fulani kuhusu kuomba Na kuna kitu kingine kuhusu kuwa na ushirika Fellowship is not praying Ushirika sio maombi Fellowship is two fellows Ushirika ni watu wawili. Talking, wanaozungumza. You talk, he talk. Wewe unaongea na yeye anaongea. He talk, I talk. Yeye anaongea na mimi naongea. That is fellowship. Huo ni ushirika. Praying is you pray yourself. Maombi ni wewe unaomba peke yako. This message came. Huu ushirika, huu jumbe ulikuja. Bring us to a place. Kutue, kutuleta mahali that we can have Tunapoweza kuwa na ushirika. Come, come let us reason together. Njo, njo, njo tuhojiane pamoja. Do your sins be as scarlet. Ingawa dhambi zako zitaweza kuwa nyekundu kama damu. They shall become as white as wool. Zitakuwa nyeupe kama sufu. Many times. Mara nyingi. Many times. Mara nyingi. I was very very tired. Nilikuwa nimechoka sana. My wife even gave me a sleeping tablet because she know I won't sleep. I'll wake up and I'll pray. Or I'll be studying. Mke wangu anaweza kanipata vidonge nimeze nilale lakini nikiamka naamka naomba. So when she give me the tablet. Akinipa vile vidonge. I talk to her. Naongea naye. And then I, I just start feeling sleepy. Hafu naanza kujisikia usingizi. Okay, 
Nasema okay mpenzi. Good night I'll see you in the morning the Lord willing I'll see you in the morning. Usikumwe mtaonana na yeye asubuhi bwana kipenda. I'll see you again I'll see you at the eastern gate. Nisipokuona nitakuona kwenye lango la mashariki. And she knows I went into my room to sleep. Na yeye anajua naenda chumbani kwangu kulala kwa sababu nimehisi usingizi. I'm closing my eyes. Na nafunga macho yangu. Hey, I never pray for that brother. Na sasa eh sijaomba kwa yeye yule ndugu. Yule mtoto shuleni. That person. Na yule mtu. Now then I wake up. Alafu naamka. My eyes I'm drowsy now. Macho yangu yamezidiwa na Body is weak. Mwili umechoka. Body is collapsing. Mwili unakaribia kuanguka. When I get down on my knees to pray. Nikiingia magotini kuomba. I will wake up tomorrow morning from my knees. Ninaamka kesho yake asubuhi nikiwa nimetoka My magotini. wife will ask me in the morning but you told me you're going to sleep. Mke wangu ataniuliza asubuhi lakini uliniambia unaenda kulala. I said no I did pray. Na nasema hapana niliomba. After prayer. Na baada ya maombi Uh, I was having fellowship with God. Nilikuwa na ushirika na Mungu. I got couple of chairs in my prayer room. Nina nina viti kadhaa kwenye chumba changu cha maombi. I put one chair there, I put one chair here. Naweka kiti cha Mungu pale naweka kiti changu hapa. And then I say Lord I need to talk to you now. Alafu nasema Bwana nataka kuongea na wewe sasa. Then when you get into that wonderful glorious fellowship of his being ndipo unapoingia katika ule ushirika wa ajabu wa utu wake this is not praying hii sio kuomba this is fellowship hii ni ushirika haleluya when you get into that glorious fellowship unapoingia kwenye ule ushirika wa kiungwa wa kiungwa wa utu being ushirika wa utukufu wa utu wake all the little things just pass away vitu vingine vidogo vidogo vinakwisha nothing troubles me hakuna kinachonisumbua i'm a seven seal believer mimi ni mimi ni mwaminio wa mihuri mihuri saba i have reached the seventh day nimefika siku ya saba i have reached the sabbath nimefika sabato i have reached the rest nimefika pumziko all the little things Mambo madogo madogo. I don't even worry. Hata siwi na wasiwasi nayo. Hello? Hello? How we learning? Je, tuko hapo? How we getting somewhere? Tunafika mahali fulani? Fellowship is higher than prayer. Ushirika ni kiwango cha juu zaidi ya maombi. He says oh it seems so petty. Anasema hivi vitu vidogo so childlike. Vyote vinaonekana vidogo kama vya kitoto. That's why we have so much trouble. Ndio sababu tuna shida nyingi. That's why you see professed Christians. Ndio sababu unaona wanaojiita wa Kristo today they are all right. Leo wako sawa and tomorrow they are all wrong. Kesho wote wamekosea. And the next day na siku inayofuatia because they never tore that old foundation down. Kwa sababu hawakuharibu ule msingi wa kale. They never built on Christ. Na hawajawahi kujengwa juu ya Kristo. Never wants to see us up and down. Mungu kama hataki kutuona juu na chini. Never, 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 never. Come where, come where, come. He wants us to be the same every day. Anataka atuone tukiwa sawa sawa kila siku. Hello? 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 Am I talking to somebody? Je, naongea na mtu fulani? You see when you enter the shikina, ukiingia kwenye shikina, you are the same Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wewe uko hivyo hivyo, Jumatatu, Jumanne, Jumatano, Alhamisi, Juma, kila siku. The problems are there. Lakini matatizo yapo. The sickness is there. Magonjwa yapo. Your neighbors don't like you. Majirani hawakupenda. The problems at work. Matati una matatizo kazini. Nothing changes. Lakini hakuna hao wote hakuna kinachokubadilisha. You are a Shekinah glory believer. Wewe ni mwamini wa utukufu wa Shekinah. Listen God in that power to pull you down. Hayo matatizo hayana nguvu za kutosha kukushusha chini. He cannot. He cannot. Hawezi, shetani hawezi. I remember a few years ago uh, they had a convention in Tembisa. Nakumbuka miaka michache iliyopita tulikuwa na mkutano Tembisa. Kule Johannesburg. And I was preaching. 
Na nilikuwa na ubii. And the Holy Spirit took me down. Na Roho Mtakatifu akanichukua kule chini. And I made a young sister stand up. Na nikakutana na dada mmoja amesimama. And she was sitting like this. Na alikuwa amekaa namna hii. And the Holy Spirit is telling me. Na Roho Mtakatifu ananiambia. She is very disappointed. Yeye ameshushwa moyo sana. Because she failed a metric. Kwa sababu the last grade in the school. Ah kwa sababu amefail mtihani wa darasa la mwisho. And because she failed. Na kwa sababu ameshindwa. She is so disappointed. Yeye anajisikia amevunjwa moyo. I told her sister. Na nikamwambia dada. You don't have to be like that. Hupasi kuwa hivyo. You can try again. Unaweza kujaribu tena. And next time you try. Wakati mimi nitakapojaribu. God is telling me to tell you you'll pass. Mungu ananiambia nikwambie utafaulu. And the next time she tried. Na wakati mwingine alipojaribu pass. Alifaulu. Now this God that we serve. Sasa huyu Mungu tunayemtumikia. He's not dead. Hajafa. Yes, you hai. He's in you. He's yuko in ndani yako, yuko ndani yangu. Everywhere. Yes. Yuko kila mahali. That pillar of fire is not in the picture. Nguzo ya moto haiko kwenye picha. That cloud is not in the picture. Yeye wingu halipo kwenye picha. No, 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 no. Hapana, 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 hapana. We started in the message with a small with a record. Tulianza ujumbe na ile kinasa sauti kidogo sana. From that record kutoka kwenye ile kanda ndogo. We went to a small tape kutoka kwenye ile santuri ndogo tukaenda kwenye kanda from the tape we went to memory stick no that a cd cd kutoka kwenye kanda ile ya kawaida tukaenda kwenye cd from that cd kutoka kwenye cd we went to usb tukaenda kwenye usb au flash memory stick. from the usb kutoka kwenye flash where is moving now inaenda wapi sasa it's in you and it's in me iko ndani yako na ndani yangu haleluya haleluya that's where god is hiding ya hiyo ndio sababu mungu anajificha hapo in you and in me ndani yako na ndani yangu the word has become flesh neno limefanyika mwili haleluya brother you can put the picture in your house and the cloud there unaweza weka picha nyumbani kwako la wingu pale ah it's nothing hiyo si chochote. But when that picture and the pillow of fire and the cloud is in your heart. Lakini wakati picha, nguzo ya moto na wingu viko moyoni mwako. Now you are a believer. Sasa wewe ni mwaminio. Some people say the pillow of fire was only for William Branham. Watu wengine wanasema nguzo ya moto ilikuwa kwa William Branham peke yake. For fort, for 40 years a pillow of fire and a cloud was there. Kwa miaka 40 nguzo ya moto na wingu vilikuwa pale. Are we here brother sister? Tuko hapa ndugu dada. I didn't start my message for tonight but I must say. Sijaanza ujumbe wangu wa usiku wa leo bado. In our church we preach long. Kanisani kwangu tunahubiri muda mrefu. Only 25 minutes for chorus leading and offering. Nothing more. Ni dakika 25 mpaka 30 kwa ajili ya nyimbo baada hapo ni neno tu. We take two and a half hours for preaching the word. Tunachukua masaa mawili na nusu kuhubiri neno. The rejoicing is after the preaching of the word. Kufurahia ni baada ya kuhubiriwa kwa neno. Not before the word. Sio kabla ya neno. The rejoicing is after the word. Tunafurahia baada ya neno kuhubiriwa. After you eat word. Baada ya kula neno. You say thank you. Ndipo nasema asante. Not before that. Sio kabla. The rejoicing is after the word. Kufurahia ni baada ya neno. Now brother Brandon told us. Sasa ndugu Brandon anatuambia. Jesus Christ claims Yesu Kristo anasafisha. Mark 16 is his own church. Okay. Yesu Kristo anadai kwamba Marko 16 ndiyo kanisa lake. That church was not made by men. Hilo kanisa halikufanywa na wanadamu. It was not a man made church. Halikuwa kanisa liliofanywa na mtu. Jesus Christ himself. Yesu Kristo mwenyewe collected them. Aliwakusanya aliwaweka wote. Aliwachagua hao watu. Told the son Toka, call that one. Akamuita huyu, akamuita yule. Na aka aka akaanza gates of hell. Halafu akasema malango ya kuzuka gates the church. Ha, yatakuwa dhidi hiyo kanisa. The church will overcome. Lakini kanisa litashinda. The reason that the church will overcome. Sababu 
ya kanisa kushinda because we saw in revelation 5 kwa sababu tunaona kwenye ufunuo wa bleeding lamb kulikuwa na maana kondoo atokwaye na damu who prevailed ambaye alishinda and he took the book na akachukua kitabu after he took the book baada ya kuchukua kitabu he put that prevailing power into the church akachukua ile nguvu yake ya kushinda akaiweka kanisani he gave the church the power akalipatia kanisa hiyo nguvu and the bible says na the bible says biblia, biblia inasema as many that has received him wengi kwa kadri ya waliompokea as many that has received him wengi kwa wingi wao kadri ya waliompokea he is a person yeye ni mtu to as many that has received him kwa wengi waliompokea to them gave it power kwao aliwapatia nguvu to become the sons of god wafanyike wana wa mungu not to them who believe sio kwa wale wanaoamini who receive lakini wale waliompokea because we are sons kwa sababu sisi ni wana is a reason why ni sababu he sent for the spirit of adoption hiyo ndio sababu anatuma roho wa kufanyika mungu kwako so that you can cry abba father ili uweze kulia abba yani baba the holy ghost roho mtakatifu connects you to the creator anakuunganisha na muumbaji yeah what he say sikiza anachosema cry lia i don't know what any brothers cry sijui kama wa ndugu huwa wanalia Hello saints. Hello mtakatifu. Are we to, are, are we on the same page? Je, tuko kwenye ukurasa mmoja? He gave the church the power. Alilipatia kanisa nguvu against all demons. Dhidi ya mapepo yote. Against all sickness. Dhidi ya magonjwa yote. Sasa nataka usikilize hivi. He said to them now go. Akawaambia niendeni. All your brothers go. Eli wa ndugu wote niendeni. Just use my name. Tumieni tu jina langu. Go all over. Nendeni kila just, mahali. Just only use my name. Tumieni jina langu tu. And just Amen. Halafu heal the sick. Ponyeni magonjwa. Raise the dead. Fufueni wafu. Just use my name. Tumieni my jina name langu. Is Jesus. Jina langu ni Yesu. Just call my name. Nendeni tu na jina langu. So everywhere they went. Kwa kila mahali walipoenda. These were believers. Hawa walikuwa waamini. They believed the word. Waliamini neno. They took Jesus at his word. Walimchukua Yesu kwa neno lake. This was before Pentecost. Hii ilikuwa kabla ya Pentecost. This was before the day of Pentecost. Ilikuwa kabla ya siku ya Pentecost. So these brothers had no Holy Ghost. Hawa wa ndugu hawakuwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. They had no Holy Ghost. Hawakuwa na Roho Mtakatifu. But all those devils lakini yale mapepo yalisikia kile Yesu alichoambia Nendeni kwa jina langu and Alleluia. they went na wakaenda they went wakaenda they went wakaenda now i want to help you a little bit here nataka nisaidie kidogo hapa they were just healing the sick walikuwa tu wakipenya wagonjwa wakifanya miujiza aina zote if you read your bible ukisoma biblia yako wote walirudi wakifurahia wakisema bwana hatukuponya wagonjwa tu lakini hata mapepo yalitutii in other words those brothers who were confident and faith kwa maneno mengine wale wa ndugu walikuwa na ujasiri na imani they were kicking the devil like this walikuwa napiga Ma, mateke mapepo kama hivi they were playing ball with walikuwa anacheza mpira mapepo this one kick to that one huyu anampigia yule that one kick to that one afu anampigia huyu they came back rejoicing wakarudi wakiwa na furaha lord even the devils are subject to us bwana hata mapepo yanatutii and i want you to hear what the lord said na nataka usikie bwana jose he said don't rejoice because the devils are subject to you akasema msifurahi kwa sababu mapepo yanawatii but you rather rejoice lakini bora mfurahi because your names are written in heaven kwa sababu jina yenu yameandikwa mbinguni he is the author of the book yeye ndiye mwandishi wa kitabu 
He wrote the book. Yeye aliandika kitabu. That's why he could tell them, ndio maana aliangaza kuambia. You must rejoice. Lazima mfurahi. Because your name is in the book. Kwa sababu majina yenu yapo kwenye kile kitabu. Now can I tell you? Sasa je, naweza kuambia? Naweza kukuuliza? Miuri imefunuliwa. Na wewe umesoma ufunuo wa miuri 7. Sio mihuri 7. Sio mihuri 7. Kichwa ni Okay. Sio mihuri 7. Ni ufunuo wa mihuri 7. Read the revelation of the seven seals. Na kama ulisoma ufunuo wa miuri saba. You saw your name there. Na ukaona jina lako pale. The pastor said your name is not written Chris. Mchungaji atuambia jina lako halijaandikwa Musa. Your name is a mystery. Jina lako ni fumbo la asili. Your name is your nature. Jina lako ni asili yako. So when you read the seals. Unaposoma miuri. You read in Christ. Ukiwa ndani ya Kristo. Your nature connects there. Asili yako inaunganika pale. Start shouting. I want to tell you tonight. Na sasa nakwambia leo. Every devil in hell. Kila papa kuzuri. Is subject to you brother. Linakutia every sickness on the earth. Kila ugonjwa kuzuri to you. Unakutia wewe. Your own name is in the book. Kwa sababu jina lako liko kwenye kitabu. Hallelujah. Listen. Skiza. Not only brothers. Sorry. Sio wandugu peke yao. Not only brothers. Sio wandugu peke yao. Hapana. Sisters also got the name the redeemed. Wadada pia wana majina yao kwenye hicho kitabu. Hallelujah. Je, hiyo ni kweli? Je, hiyo ni kweli? One time. One time. Wakati mmoja Brother Branham made an altar call. Ndugu Branham alifanya mstari wa maombi. And the brothers were praying. Na wandugu walikuwa naomba. And there was a sister that was sitting in the audience. Na kulikuwa na dada ameketi kwenye hadhara kule. And she feeling in her heart she must pray for that certain. Na yule dada alikuwa na hisi moyoni mwake anaongozwa kumuombea dada mwingine mtoto. No, I can't do that. Aka anasema siwezi kufanya hivyo. Niko nje ya utaratibu. The prophet is standing there. Nabii amesimama pale. God is standing there. Mtu wa Mungu anasimama pale. I can't do that. Mimi siwezi kufanya hivyo. And the Holy Spirit wrestling with him. Na Roho Mtakatifu akawa anamsukuma. And the Holy Spirit overpowered her. Na Roho Mtakatifu akamshinda nguvu ile dada. And then she came to the sister. Na akaenda kwa dada mwingine pale. And she just came and stood in the queue. Na akaenda akasema kwenye yule mstari. Na akasema dada. Can I just pray for you? Je, naweza nikamwombea huyu mtoto? Naweza nikakuombea dada akasema. Do you want to pray? Je, unataka kuomba? Then she said no, I don't have a problem. Akasema hapana, sina shida. The sister stood there, she held her. So dada akasema pale akamshikilia. And she just prayed for. Her. Na akamuombea. And she went back and sat down. Na akarudi akaketi. But this sister was still standing. Lakini huyu dada alikuwa bado kwenye mstari wa maombi. But the time she came here to the front. Sasa wakati alipofika kwa nabii hapa. She stood before brother Brennan. Akasema mbeya ndugu Brennan. And brother Brennan is asking him. Na ndugu Brennan anamwambia. Why are you standing in the front line? Wewe unasimama kwenye msali wa maombi. There was a sister that prayed for you already. Wakati kuna dada amesema kwa nabii. Hallelujah. How many of you mothers here today? Ni mama wangapi hapa? When your mama ni mama wa sick. Ambapo mtoto wako alikuwa na hivyo. Your baby, umemshika mtoto wako. You pray for your baby. Na ukamwombea mtoto wako. God heal your baby. Na Mungu akampona mtoto wako. I want to take you back to the Azusa Street Revival. Nataka nikurudishe kwenye uamsho wa mtaa wa Azusa. It was not only brother spring. Haikuwa wandugu peke yao wakiomba. Ilikuwa wakina mama. Ilikuwa mabinti. Entire church. Kanisa lote. Boys, girls, wavulana, wasichana, wakina mama, wakina dada. Everybody was Kira mmoja alikuwa akiomba. And that revival took the world. Na ule uamsho ukaenea dunia yote. In the bride of Jesus Christ. Ndani ya bibi harusi wa Yesu Kristo is not only men. Ndani ya bibi harusi ya Kristo sio tu wanaume and girls and children harusi ana wanaume na wanawake na mabinti na watoto Haleluya Awe ye je tuko hapa 
We are so privileged to have this message. Tumebarikiwa sana kuwa na huyu Brother Branham says, Ndugu Branham anasema, God put that power in the church. Mungu ameweka nguvu kanisani. And he says, show me where God took it away. Na ananiambia anasema, nitafutie mahali nionyeshe mahali ambapo Mungu aliondoa hizo nguvu he kanisani. He says, God put it in the church. Anasema, Mungu aliziweka kanisani hizo nguvu. Show me where he took it away. Nionyeshe aliposiondoa. Hallelujah. Oh my. Hajawahi kuziondoa ndugu. Yeah what he says. Sikiza anachosema. As the eagle stared at the nest. Kama t- kama taya anavyofurukutisha ki- kioto chake. Remember this message. Sikiza kumbuka hizi jumbe. The devil came inside the message. Shetani amekuja ndani ya ujumbe. preachers from inside the message. Na ameinua wahubiri ndani ya ujumbe. And they preach the holy ghost out of the church. Na wana hubi, wana mhubiri Roho Mtakatifu nje atoke nje ya kanisa. Until the churches are so backslidden now. Mpaka kanisa limerudi juma sasa. We sasa. can't even worship because there's no Holy Ghost. Hatuwezi hata kuabudu kwa sababu hakuna Roho Mtakatifu. Believers don't know what it is to worship. Waaminio hawajui jinsi ya kuabudu. Holy Ghost ha, hawajui jinsi ya kuabudu. The Holy Ghost is out of the church. Roho Mtakatifu yuko nje ya kanisa. We don't need that blessing anymore. Hatuhitaji zile baraka tena. I got good news for you. Nina habari njema kwa ajili yako. I got good news for you. Nina habari njema kwa ajili yako. I like to tell you what the messenger says. Nataka niwaambie kile mjumbe anachosema. Okay, I know it's and somewhere but anyhow let's see. Niko mahali fulani lakini like ngoja tuone. Lazima niwaambie kile mjumbe anachosema. Okay, in the Laodicean church age, I'll just quote it right. Katika ujumbe wa Laodikia nitainukuu. In the Laodicea church age. Katika wakati wa Laodikia. He said my brother sister. Alisema ndugu yangu dada yangu. What made the Israelite people get cut off? Kilichowafanya watu wa Israeli wakatiliwe mbali. He said because they rejected Paul's Pentecostal message. Alisema ni kwa sababu walikataa ujumbe wa Paulo wa Kipentecost. God cut them off. Mungu akawakatilia mbali. And he says I want to tell you. Anasema nataka niwaambie in the last days. Katika siku za mwisho. In the Laodicean church. Katika wakati wa Laodikia. God is going to cut the Laodicean people off. Mungu atawakatilia mbali watu wa Laodikia. Because they are rejecting the Pentecostal blessing. Kwa sababu wanakataa baraka za Pentecost. That's why the churches are like they dead today. Hiyo ndio sababu makanisa yanaonekana yamekufa leo. We got no gifts in the church. Hatuna karama kanisani. Hatuna unabii makanisani. Hatuna kunena kwa lugha makanisani. We're supposed to be blessed with all spiritual blessings. Tunapaswa kuwa waliobarikiwa na baraka zote za kiroho. We haven't got the joy of the Lord in the church. Hatuna furaha ya Bwana kanisani. Because you see we got the word, we got the word, we got the word, we got the word. Tuna neno, tuna neno, tuna neno. I'm here to tell you Jesus Christ spoke in tongues. Niko hapa kuambia Yesu Kristo alinena kwa lugha. Put him on the cross. Walipomweka msalabani. Spoken tongue. Alinena kwa lugha. I'm here to tell you tonight. Niko hapa kuambia siku ya leo. I'm here to remind you tonight. Niko hapa kwa William Branham. William Branham. He had all nine gifts operating through him. Alikuwa na karama zote tisa za kiroho zikitenda kazi kupitia yeye. All nine gifts Karama zote tisa was operating through him. Zilikuwa zikitenda kazi kupitia yeye. You got this message. Na kama una ujumbe huu, say we don't need that. Halafu unasema sihitaji hizi karama. Oh my. That's not Pentecostal church. That's not the Pentecostal blessing. Hilo sio kanisa la Pentecoste, hizo sio baraka za Pentecoste. The Pentecostal blessing must be in the church. Baraka za Pentecoste lazima ziwepo kanisani. Till Jesus comes. Mpaka Yesu arudi. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Oh my. Thank yeah, what he says in this message now. Kiza anachosema kwenye ujumbe huu. Then we'll go to our topic for tonight. Halafu ndio tutaenda kwenye ujumbe wa siku ya leo. All of you got that book as the eagle stared at the nest. Wale waliona ujumbe unaoitwa kama taya anavyofurukuta kiota chake anasema katika huo ujumbe shida ya hivi viota au vitalu vya vifaranga wa kuku they, they know what they don't know what they clucking about hawajui kile wanachopigia kelele they errant eagles they wow sio tai eagles sio tai hawa but just old barnyard chickens 
Lakini ni kitalu cha kale cha kuku who have never put the power of God to a test. Ambao kamwe hawajawahi kujaribu nguvu za Mungu. Now now hear what he says. Sasikiza anachosema. They have never been healed. Hawajawahi kuponywa. They have never been blessed by the great Holy Spirit. Hawajawahi kubarikiwa na Roho Mtakatifu Mkuu. They have never danced in the spirit. Hawajawahi kucheza katika roho. They never wept in the spirit. Hawajawahi kulia katika roho. But an eagle lakini tai he has all this anayo yote haya and even more hata zaidi ya haya he just shows on yeye anaruka na kuambana 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 right into the heavenly mpaka kwenye mawingu ya mbinguni and you know what brother brandon said na najua ndugu brandon anasemaje you know me I, i never believed in the dancing of the holy spirit anasema unajua sikuwahi kuamini kucheza katika roho he said i didn't believe that anasema sikuwahi kuamini hiyo i just thought that it was not right anasema niliwaza hiyo sio sawa and then he said one day akasema siku moja I was in a meeting somewhere. Nilikuwa kwenye mkutano mahali fulani. And he said before I know what happened. Na akasema kabla sijajua kilichotendeka. He said I took the floor. Akasema nilijikuta niko hapa. He said I was just dead. Nilikuwa nacheza nacheza katika roho. He said since he believe. Anasema tangu nimeamini. Dancing in the Holy Ghost. Hapo aliamini dancing in the Holy Ghost. Kucheza katika roho mtakatifu. It's the glory of God. Ni utukufu wa Mungu. Dancing in the Holy Ghost. Kucheza katika roho mtakatifu wa Mungu ni roho wa Mungu. And the glory comes into the church. Na utukufu unapokuja kanisani. Oh, oh, you can't stop nobody. Huwezi kumzuia yote. No sister. Sio wanduku wa baraka. Sio yote. Wao bwana tuambia. People are getting anointed. Wao wanapata anointed. Wao wanapata pale. Wao wanapata pale. I have to stop preaching now. Inabidi sasa niache kuhubiri. Because the spiritual disco is on. Kwa sababu roho sasa ana anaendelea anachukua kuanzia hapo na kuendelea. Haleluya. Praise the Lord. If you are an eagle tonight. Kama wewe ni tai usiku jioni leo. That is your heritage. Huo ni urithi wako. If you, n- if you never dance in the spirit. Kama hujawahi kucheza katika roho. You have right to say Lord. Una haki ya kusema Bwana. Be like me. Come into this fellowship me. Njo kuwa kama mimi, njo kwenye huyu shirika. Come into that fellowship. Njo kwenye huyu shirika. And then you say Lord, you know. Alafu unamwambia Bwana unajua. You know that glory I had with you. Ule utukufu nilokuwa nao na wewe. Before the world began. Kabla ulimwengu hujaanza. Can you just send that glory upon? Je, unaweza kutuma ule utukufu uje? So I can preach this message. Ili niweze kuhubiri huu jambo. Just the way Malachi for preach. Jinsi Malachi alivyohubiri. The people call me. Na watu acha watu waniite. Brother Branham the son. Mtoto wa ndugu Branham. It is fine. Haina shida. I deserve the title. Ninastahili hicho kilicho cheo. You remember? Unakumbuka? And he went beyond the curtain of time. Alipoenda ngambo ya pazia la wakati. And he saw all those believers. Na akaona wale waaminio wote kule. So you he saw me. Akaona wewe akaniona mimi. Akaona kila mmoja wenu. Hallelujah. Already there. Aliwaona mkiwa tayari kule. Already there. Mkiwa kule tayari. So why do you worry what's happening here? Sasa mbona una wasiwasi na yanayoendelea hapa wakati yuko kule tayari? You see what Pastor Arnold was telling you. Unaona mchungaji Arnold alichokuwa anasema? He was speaking in your language but understanding. Alikuwa na neno kwa lugha yenu lakini mimi nilielewa. I he said yeah we got different different churches. Alisema tuna makanisa mengi na mafundisho mengi. Different doctrine. Mafundisho tofauti. But you know what he said? Lakini unajua alichosema? He said don't worry. Alisema msiwe na wasiwasi. Squeeze come. Wakati ile mfinyo utakapokuja. Come together. Wote tutakuja pamoja. He spoke in your language but I understood it. Alinena kwa lugha yenu lakini nilielewa. Because the Holy Ghost was speaking. Kwa sababu Roho Mtakatifu alikuwa ananena. The Holy Ghost had used him to tell you. Roho Mtakatifu alimtumia kuambia. He interpreted the word to me. Akatafsiri ile neno kwangu. Haleluya. Lore, this message is a international message. Huu jumbe ni ujumbe wa kimataifa. I went I went 
about one month now to ordain a brother in mwanzi mmoja uliopita kumwepa in kule Durban who started the services there ambaye ameanza ameanza huduma kule i i met him few times nilikutana naye mara kadhaa mara chache he didn't talk lakini atajai kuongea he just came and shook man and said pastor thank you for the word it was powerful alikuja tu akaniambia mchungaji asante kwa neno ulikuwa na nguvu so he phoned me kwa kanipigia and he said pastor can i come and see you akasema mchungaji naweza kuja kukuona then i said this is strange i stay about 100 kilometers away nikasema hii ni ajabu na kama mamia kilomita i said brother you welcome nikamwambia ndugu karibu muda wote so he came with his family so akaja na jamii yake family yake and then the wife prepared supper for them we all enjoyed supper together na mke wangu akawaandalia chakula cha jioni wakafurahia sote tukafurahia chakula he said can i see you in the prayer room na akasema naweza kuonana nawe kwenye chumba cha maombi. I said no problem I took him to the prayer room. Nikasema hamna shida nikampea kwenye chumba cha maombi. Pastor. Akasema mchungaji. For a few months now. Kwa miezi kadhaa sasa. I feel in my spirit. Ninajisikia rohoni mwangu. That I need to be ordained as a pastor. Kwamba nahitaji kuwekwa wakfu kama mchungaji. So I've been fasting and praying and praying. Kwa nimekuwa nafunga na kuomba na kuomba. So then I received a call from my brother from PE Port Elizabeth South Africa. Akasema ndipo nikapata simu kutoka kwa ndugu yangu kutoka Port Elizabeth Africa. I don't know the brother. Simjui huyo ndugu. He just phoned me. Akanipigia. And he said brother na, is your name Elijah? Na akasema ndugu je jina lako wewe ni Elia? Yes. Akasema ndio. Then he said the Lord is telling me. Akasema Bwana ananiambia that you need to be ordained. Kwamba unatakiwa uweke wakfu. So when can I come to ordain you? Kwa hiyo lini naweza kuja nikuweke wakfu? So this brother was called. Sasa huyu ndugu aliyepigiwa simu then au alikuwa alipata ubaridi. Then he said pastor. Akasema mchungaji, did the Lord tell you to ordain me? Je, Bwana alikwambia wewe uniweke wakfu? He said no. Nikasema hapana. Then I said I can't accept you. Ye akasema hapana. Ndipo nikasema siwezi kukubali. The Lord told you I need to be ordained. Bwana alikwambia natakiwa kuwekwa wakfu. But he never tell you to ordain me. Lakini hakukwambia wewe ndio uniweke mimi wakfu. And the pastor said no. Na mchungaji akasema hapana. He said thank you. Akasema asante. Then he continued praying and praying. Akaendelea kuomba na kuomba. And he said while he was praying and praying. Anasema wakati alipokuwa kioma na kuomba. He said I'm just keep coming up. Akasema nilikuwa hu, asema pastor Chris alikuwa anatokea. Every time he's praying the Lord is waving me. Kila wakati akiomba Bwana anamuonyesha. Waving me. Anamuonyesha. Then he said can you come and ordain me? Ndipo anasema je unaweza kuja kuniweka wakati? So I said brother I don't have a problem of ordaining you. Ndipo nikamwambia ndugu sina shida na kuweka wakati. The only problem I have. Shida moja niliyonayo. Is the message of Malachi. Ni ujumbe wa Malaki 4. Do you qualify? Je, unakidhi vigezo? So I pull out all the quotes. Kwa hiyo nikachukua nuku zote. And the Bible. Na Biblia. And I'm reading. Na nikasoma. Quote. Nikasoma nuku. Biblia. That brother pass all the test. Yule ndugu akakidhi vigezo vyote. When he pass all the test. Alipokidhi vigezo vyote. And I said okay, I will come to ordain. Nikasema sasa nitakuja kuweka wakati. One of the testimonies I heard him is from Congo. Moja wapo ya shida nilizosikia yeye yuko Kongo. In that area, kwenye ile pa, ile sehemu he is preaching in Congolese language. Kwenye hilo eneo yeye anahubiri kwa kutumia lugha ya Kikongo. But Zulu people are understanding this language. Lakini watu wa jamii ya Kizulu wanamuelewa akiwa anahubiri kwa lugha ya Kikongo. And they are surrendering to the message. Na wao wanajiachilia wanaji kwa ujumbe. I said brother shake my hand. Nikamwambia ndugu nipo mkono. I understand this language. Ninaelewa hii. I know the God of all languages. Ninamjua Mungu wa lugha zote. I had experiences like that. Nina ujuzi kama huo. One time we put the mics and the speakers outside there by the car. Siku moja aliweka speaker na microphone and I put the mic and I was preaching warning then judgment. Na nilichukua mic nilikuwa nahubiri hukumu onyo kisha hukumu. God sent us a prophet. Mungu ametutumia nabii. His name is William Branham. Jina yake ni William Branham. If you don't receive him. Kama umpokei. Judgment is going to take you. Hukumu itakukabili. I was preaching and preaching. Na nilikuwa nahubiri na kuhubiri. Way up on the hill. Juu kule. There was an old man. Kulikuwa na mtu mzee. He was busy digging in the garden. Yeye alikuwa analima bustanini. And he had a rash on his body. Na akasikia kitu fulani mwilini mwake. cannot leave him. Ambacho hakiwezi kumwachilia. When the service was finished the brothers, Alikuwa anamuasha mwilini mwake ambao hawezi kumwacha. The brothers were packing the instruments. Baada ya kumaliza mahubiri wa ndugu alikuwa anapakia vyombo. And they all left. 
And I went home. I don't stay far away. I went home. That old man put his coat and dressed up and he took a stick. And he started walking down. He came to this area where the meeting was. And he's asking all the people. Where is that man that was preaching here? Where does that man stay? So some people asked him, why do you want that man? He says he stays down there. So he came there. And he took his cap off. And he went down on his knees. I picked him up. I said, no, Baba, you don't do that. There is only one person we do that. Kuna mtu mmoja tunayemfanyia hivyo. To Jesus Christ. Bwana Yesu Kristo. Not to me. Sio kwangu mimi. So I asked him what happened. Nikamuza nini kimetendeka? He says when I was preaching in English, anasema wakati mimi nilipokuwa nahubiri kwa Kiingereza, God was interpreting it in Zulu. Mungu alikuwa na tafsiri ya lugha kwa kizulu. I'm preaching in English. Mimi nahubiri Kiingereza. And he's hearing it in Zulu. Na anasikia ujumbe kwa lugha ya kizulu. When I prayed in English. Ninatioaomba kwa Kiingereza. He can hear the prayer in Zulu. Anaweza kusikia maombi kwa kizulu. He said that rash went out of his body immediately. Ile miwasho ikaondoka mwili wake shida ule ule. And he's showing me his body. Na ananionyesha mwili wake. He pulled his shirt out. Akaondoka show me his he said I am normal He said the God that you serve is real So when I am telling you Pentecost is real Pentecost is real No matter what they say You must understand our language Hallelujah Yeah, go read your message. Everybody say the Roman Catholic Church is a mother church. Your prophet and my prophet said no. He said Pentecost is a mother church. He said when it comes to a woman, he makes our prophet because he was not too, too, too clever. He make it very simple. Nabi wetu analifanya Rahisi. He says when a woman gives birth, anasema mwanamke anapozaa, there's a cord that comes out. Kuna uzi au kamba inayotoka nje. And they cut the cord. Lile kondo la uzazi linatoka nje wanalikata. The cord goes back in. Na lile ile sehemu ya ile kondo linarudi ndani. Another child is born, na mtoto mwingine anazaliwa, same cord comes again. Ile kondo lile lile linatoka tena. And they cut the cord. Wanalikata. And the cord goes back in. Linarudi ndani tena. Another child is born. Mtoto mwingine anazaliwa same cord comes up. Kondo lile lile tena linatoka. No new cord. Sio jipya. He said Pentecost is a mother church. Anasema Pentecost ni kanisa mama. Na nilizaliwa pale. Connected there. Nimeunganika pale. That's a mother church. Hilo ndio kanisa mama. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise God. Je, umewahi kusikia watu wakiimba lugha ya kimalaika? Naongea kuhusu kuimba. Ngoja niache hayo pembeni. Lakini hayo yote ni urithi wenu. Ukikubali, ukiupokea huo urithi, Hutokuwa vile vile kamwe. Now tonight I want to go back to where we stopped there last night. Sasa usiku wa leo nataka kwenda mahali tulipo koma usiku uliopita. Amen. Hallelujah. Or oh, can we close the service we meet tomorrow? Au tufunge ibada tukutane kesho. No we can't meet tomorrow. Some people won't come tomorrow. Hatuwezi kutana kesho kwa sababu kuna watu kesho hawatokuepo. Amen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let us stand to our feet. Tusimame sasa kwa miguu yetu. And turn in our Bibles. Na tufungue Biblia zetu. Praise the Lord. 
Brother Branham said, "Can you stand to your feet and turn in your Bibles?" Ndugu Branham anasema, "Unaweza kusimama miguuni pako na kuchukua Biblia zako." Hakusema, "Simama kwa miguu yako na uwashe simu yako." Hakusema simama kwa miguu yako ufungue simu yako. He said, "Can you turn your Bibles?" Alisema, "Unaweza kufungua Biblia yako?" Sio simu yako. Hello? 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 It's not the same. Sio kitu kile kile. On the iPad is not written Bible in the front. Kwenye iPad yako hapajaandikwa Biblia pale. On your phone it is not written Bible on the cover. Kwenye cover ya simu yako hapajaandikwa Biblia. He said can we stand to our feet and turn our Bibles open? Alisema, "Je, tunaweza kusimama kwa miguu yetu tufungue Biblia zetu?" If you are a believer, kama wewe ni mwamini yo, listen to the prophet. Msikilize nabii. Buy yourself a Bible. Jinunulie Biblia yako mwenyewe. But for tonight we'll have mercy and allow you. Lakini kwa usiku wa leo, kwa jioni leo tutarehemu kwa jambo hilo. But the next time I come, lakini nikirudi tena wakati mwingine, I see every one of you with a Bible. Nataka kumuona kila mmoja wenu na Biblia. Sio simu. Right, Amen. let's go. Okay, tufungue to St John 12 verse 20 and 21. Yohana mtakatifu sura ya 12 mstari wa 20 na 21. I told you we'll go back to John 12. There's so much messages in there. Niliwaambia tutarudi kwenye Yohana sura ya 12 kuna jumbe nyingi pale. know how much of messages are there. Na wachungaji wote wanajua ni jumbe za kilindi kiasi gani ziko pale. We're going to read verse 20 and 21. Tutasoma mstari wa 20 na 21. Thank you brother. Asante ndugu. Read brother you. Read the desiderate. Okay, tutasoma katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo. Palikuwa na wayunani kadha wa kadha miongoni mwa watu waliokwea kwenda kuabudu kwenye siku kuu. Basi hao walimwendea Filipo, mtu wa Bethesda. Beth, Bethsaida ya Galilaya wakamuomba wakisema Bwana sisi tunataka kumuona Yesu 21 There were certain Greeks kulikuwa na wayunani kadha Amongst them that came to worship at the feast Miongoni mwao waliokuja kuabudu kwenye siku kuu There were certain Greeks not all the Greeks Kulikuwa na baadhi au aina fulani ya wayunani There were a lot of Greeks there Kulikuwa na wayunani wengi pale But certain Greeks lakini wa Yunani aina fulani au kadhaa baadhi they came therefore to Philip wakamjia Filipo okay those Greeks came to worship at the feast hao wa Yunani walikuja kuabudu kwenye karamu kwenye siku so the idea was to come there and worship kwa hiyo wazo kuu lilikuwa kuja hiyo siku na kuabudu hawakwenda kutazamana moja kwa mwingine nani yuko pale nani hayuko pale walikuja kuabudu hey, i'm trying to keep myself here the holy spirit is pulling me now najaribu kujiweka pale half roho mtakatifu anivuta they came with the intention to worship walikuja kwa kusudi ya kuabudu the same came therefore to philip How how walimjia Filipo which was of Bethsaida aliyekuwa wa Bethsaida of Galilee ya Galilaya and desired him nao wakamuomba in other words they had a desire kwa maneno mengine walikuwa na shauku and the desire was not satisfied na shauku yao haikutoshelezwa they came to Philip wakaja kwa Filipo and they said wakasema sir bwana we want to see Jesus tuataka kumuona Yesu. Sir, Bwana. Sir, Bwana. Not brother. Bwana, sio ndugu, not pastor. Sio mchungaji, not uncle. Sio mjomba. Sir, Bwana. Amen. It's from the royal family. Ni kutoka kwenye uzao wa kifalme au familia ya kifalme. Sir, Bwana. We want to see Jesus. Tuataka kumuona Yesu. You may take a seat. Mweza kuketi. Amen. 
these Greeks were Gentiles. How are you nani walikuwa mataifa? These Greeks were bright material. How are you nani walikuwa vifaa vya bibi harusi? They went to the feast to worship. Au walikuwa aina ya bibi harusi. Walienda kwenye worshipers. Walikuwa waabudu halisi. They came to worship at the feast. Walikuja kuabudu kwenye siku ya sikukuu ya Mungu. Brother Brian tells us. Ndugu Brian anatuambia. When the seven seals open, mwili wa saba unapofunuliwa, it was a feast. Ilikuwa karamu. It was time to worship. Ilikuwa wakati wa kuabudu. The worship began. Uabudu kuabudu kwa Mungu. The seals broke. Mwili pavunjwa. Haleluya. Amina. Hello? Hello? The seals never break for you to be educated. Miuri haikuvunjwa ili wewe uelimike. The seals never break to give you information. Miuri haikuvunjwa ili upate habari za sasa. The seals broke. Miuri ivunjwa. To bring you into a time of worship. Kukuleta wewe kwenye wakati wa kuabudu. Into a time of praise unto the Lord. Ni wakati wa sifa kwa Bwana. Into a time of receiving redemption. Kwenye wakati wa kupokea ukombozi. Amen. Amina. You must have a reason why you go to church. Lazima uwe na sababu kwa nini unaenda kanisani. And when you come to church. Na unapokuja kanisani. Listen to me. Sikilize. Let me go away from there. Hebu nitoke hapo. Listen to me. Nisikize. When you come to church. Unapokuja kanisani. I want to show you something. Nataka nikuonyeshe kitu fulani. Brother Branham says you Ndugu Branham anasema creator. Wewe ni muumbaji. When you come to church, unapokuja kanisani, you create an atmosphere around you. Unaomba mazingira fulani kwa kuzunguka. Come Jesus Christ there. Yanaomkaribisha Yesu Kristo. You, you create an atmosphere. Anasema unaomba mazingira. When you clap your hands, when you stand up, unapokuja you are there, you must pray for Jesus there. Inabidi mkaribishe Yesu pale. I want to tell you. Nataka nikwambie. There are people in my church. Kuna watu kanisani kwangu. That came to me and said, Pastor. Walikuja wakaniambia mchungaji the lord is visiting that person na muona mtu bwana mtendea mtu yule but that person and the angel malaika yuko kwa yuko kwa mtu yule the lord visiting me kwa nini bwana hanitembelei mimi i said because you are not creating the right atmosphere nikamwambia kwa sababu hautengenezi mazingira sahihi your atmosphere must welcome him mazingira yako lazima yamkaribishe and when you welcome him unapomkaribisha come right into that atmosphere anakuja kwenye hayo mazingira Creator, wewe ni muumbaji. That's why you can't come to church. Ndio maana unakuja kanisani kai hivi. Like this. Na ukai huyo you must come to church stay in your house. Kama usije kanisani kwa nini ukaji pale kwa place of worship. Kanisani ni sehemu ya ibada. The church is a house of worship. Kanisa ni sehemu ya ibada. Come to the church. The church is our father's house. Kanisa ni nyumba ya baba yetu. When you go to your father's house, unapoenda kwenye nyumba ya baba yetu, you are free then man. Uko huru pale nyumbani kwenu. You can do what you want to do. Unaweza kufanya nacho kwa kufanya. Unaweza kutoka kile ukimbia nacho hivi. Ukakaa pale. Ukatoka kitu kikirudishia hapo. Nobody can stop you in the father's house. Unataka kuzuia kwenye nyumba ya baba yako. But in their house, lakini kwenye nyumba yako, they can stop you. Kwenye nyumba za wengine ni ya wafada za. Lakini si kwenye nyumba ya baba yako. When God redeemed me, Mungu alipokuomboa, I take my children and my wife. Nitakuwa mtoto wangu na mke wangu. I go to church. Nikaenda kanisani. I sit here. Nilikaa hapa. My wife sit left hand side, not right hand side. Mke wangu anakaa upande wa kushoto si wa kulia. Because the bone came out from the left hand. Kwa sababu ubavu ulitoka upande wa kushoto si wa kulia. So she sit here. Kwaana kaa hapa and when I am worshiping na wakati naabudu now and then I open my eyes hasa nafungua macho yangu and I look at my wife I look at my children mtazamo 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 and I mtazamu. worship and I worship naabudu na naabudu I look at my wife na naangalia mtu wangu naangalia mtu wangu because I want them to know kwa sababu nataka wajue to our father's house tunaenda kwenye nyumba ya baba yetu pray Tunaenda kuomba to worship him. Tunaenda kumwabudu yeye. Let's go for a visit there. Hatukuja kwa ajili ya ka, ya biashara pale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Certain Greeks. Ah, wa Yunani kadha. They came to the service. Wakaja ibadani. And they were worshiping. Na walikuwa kiabudu. And no matter how much of songs they sang. Na haijalishi waliimba nyimbo za no matter how 
kiasi gani no matter how long they danced haijalishi walicheza sana kiasi gani no matter how long they worship haijalishi waliabudu sana kiasi gani they had nice testimonies walikuwa na shahada nzuri everything was fine kila kitu kilikuwa sawa for all the people kwa watu wote everything was fine kwa watu wote kila kitu kilikuwa sawa certain Greeks lakini kulikuwa na wainani kwa people aina fulani ya watu pale they did everything they wanted to do walifanya kila kitu walichotaka kufanya in their hearts lakini mioni mwao they were not satisfied hawakuridhika they enjoyed everything ndipo walifanya kila kitu but they was not happy lakini hawakufurahia they were not satisfied hawakuridhika then they went to philip ndipo wakamwendea filipo because they went to philip kwa sababu alienda kwa filipo because they know they heard ni kwa sababu wanajua walisikia philip is a sign board kwamba filipo ni ishara ubao wa ishara philip is pointing the people to jesus christ kwamba filipo ni ubao wa ishara unaoelekeza watu kwa so Yesu. So they went to the sign board Philip. Kwa wakaenda kwenye ubao wa ishara. And Philip. he said Philip, na wakamwambia Philip, we heard tumesikia about how you went kuhusu jinsi ulivyokwenda uh, to fetch Nathaniel. Kumuita Nathanael. And when you met Nathaniel, na ulipokutana na Nathaniel, when you went to Philip When you went to Nathaniel. Ulipana kwa Nathaniel, you said to Nathaniel, Nathaniel. Ulimwambia Nathaniel, we have found the Messiah. Tumempata Masihi. Who Moses and the prophets were writing about. Ambaye Musa na manabii waliandika kwa Yesu. We have found the Messiah. Tumempata Masihi. So he was introducing the Messiah. Kwa wewe ulikuwa unamtambulisha Masihi. Nathaniel. Kwa Nathaniel. And Nathaniel said. Na Nathaniel akasema, ah. ah Can anything good come out of me? Hivi jamaa linaweza kuja kutoka Nazareth? I got a better church than yours. Mimi na kanisa zuri kuliko la kwenu. I got to we got 5000 people. Kanisa letu lina idadi ya watu 5000. My pastor is very intelligent. Mtunaji wangu ana akili sana. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Kuna kitu chema kinaweza kuja kutoka Nazareth kweli? Today and he said brother Alisimama pale akasema ndugu. Acha kukosoa. Stop making bad statements. Acha kuweka kuleta kauli mbaya. I want you to come and see. Mimi nataka uje uone wewe. Talk 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 talk. Just come and see. Usionge onge onge. We found the Messiah. Tumempata Masihi. And then he said okay. Na akasema sawa. I'm coming. Nakuja. So he went. Kwa hiyo akaenda. Philip is walking with Nathaniel. Philip anatembea na Nathaniel. Come on brothers you preacher brothers listen to this Ewa ndugu mliohubiri sikiza As they entered in the church Walipoingia kanisani Jesus was standing by the pulpit Yesu alikuwa amesimama mimbarani He said behold an Israelite Azama Mwisraeli Hallelujah He is no God Ambaye ndani yake hakuna hila He was reflecting the sign of the Messiah Alikuwa akiakisi ishara ya Masihi He was backing up the sign board's voice Yeye yeah, alikuwa naunga mkono sauti ya ubao wa ishara. He backed up Philip's ministry. Aliunga mkono huduma ya Philip. He said amen to Philip. Akasema amina kwa Philip. He said be old and Israelite. Akasema tazama Mwisraeli. Whom there is no God. Amen ndani yake hakuna hila. Daniel said. Nathani akasema. Oh. Oh. Where did you know me from? Unijua lini bwana? He said before Philip called you. Akasema kabla sisi walipita. Nilikuona who was praying under the tree. Nilikuwa unaomba chini ya mti. Before Philip called you. Kabla Philip hajakuta. I saw you pray. Mimi nilikuona ukiomba. You should surely. Akasema hakika wote teacher. Wewe ni mwalimu. Hakika you are the Messiah. Wewe ni Masihi. You should believe us doubt this. Akasema unaamini hili? He said yes. Akasema ndiyo. You should because you believe. Akasema kwa sababu unaamini. Now you will see angels. Sasa utaona malaika. Ascending and descending. Kwenda na kushuka. Because you believe. Kwa sababu unaamini. The Messiah. Ishara ya Masihi. He will connect you. Na nitakuunganisha into a supernatural world. Kwa ulimwengu wa kimbingini. I will see angels. Macho yako yataona malaika. Wakija juu na chini. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my.
Thank you, Praise Jesus. Praise God. Mungu asifiwe. Oh my. Hallelujah. Are we here, brother? Je, tuko hapa ndugu? And I want to tell you today. Sasa nataka nikwambie leo. There are many people in the denomination. Kuna watu wengi kwenye madhehebu. Many people down the street here. Watu wengi mtaani. They are looking for Jesus. Wanamtafuta Yesu. Every church kila kanisa should add the sign of the Messiah in the church. Lazima liwe na ishara ya Masihi Kristo ni kwao. Sign of Jesus Christ. Kuwa bibi harusi wa Yesu Kristo the sign of the Messiah must be in the church. Ishara ya Masihi lazima liwe kanisani. And there is something wrong in the church. Vinginevyo mnao kaa vibaya kanisani. Jesus said I am the Messiah. Yesu alisema mimi ni Masihi. You are the Messiah yet. Niye ni Masihi wa Now who is that you? Sasa yule aliye pamoja nanyi. Every church in a message Kila kanisa la ujumbe should have the sign of the Messiah. Lazima liwe na ishara ya Masihi. And the sign of the Messiah. Na ishara ya Masihi. Send our brothers out. Lazima iwatume wanduku wote on the highway. Waende kwenye njia. On the byway. Waende kwenye njia. Come our church. Njoni kanisani kwetu. I will tell you what is the difference. Je, ha, nitawaambia tofauti na mimi. The same Lord. Tunamtumikia Bwana yule huyu. You tell them. Wata, wat- we got the sign of the Messiah. Okay. Watakwambia tofauti ni nini? Wao utawaambia tuna ishara ya Masihi. The sign of the Messiah in the church. Ishara ya Masihi kanisani. Made a difference from all the other churches. Ndio inaleta tofauti na makanisa mengine yote. The sign of the Messiah in the church. Ishara ya Masihi kanisani. Was different from all the other churches. Ilikuwa tofauti na makanisa mengine yote. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Our young brothers can't go out. Sasa vijana wetu hawawezi kwenda nje. Kwa sababu hatuna kitu. Hatuna kitu cha ku, cha kuambia watu. You see that word, that word. Unaona hilo neno. You see that word, that word. Unaona hilo neno, hilo neno. become flesh. Lazima lifanyike mwili. The quotation must become flesh. Hiyo mikuu ifanyike mwili. Then you going to become a messiah. Mipo utafanyika masihi. Amina. And you hear your congregation when they come in church. Na ndipo kusanyika watu wakija kanisani. They so reverent. Wanaona unyenyekevu. They live at home so careful. Wana wanatazama nyumba zao vizuri au wanashughulikia nyumba zao vizuri. They go to school so conscious. Wanaenda shuleni wakiwa na ufahamu. Everybody in the church knows. Kila mmoja kanisani anajua. When our pastor come to the pulpit. Mchungaji wetu anapokuja mimbarani. He will come straight to me. Atakuja moja kwa moja kwangu. me what I did in the school. Na ataniambia kile nilichofanya shuleni. The shundeni. sign of the Messiah. Ishara ya Masihi. Keeps the church in order. Inafanya kanisa liwe kwenye utaratibu wake. The sign of the Messiah. Ishara ya Masihi. Fear in the people. Inaleta hofu kwa watu. Au kicho. Hallelujah. I can tell you some testimonies from my church. Ninaweza kukuambia baadhi ya shahuda kutoka kanisani kwangu. When the super anointing comes. Kwamba wakati ule upako mkuu unaposhuka. Na nikinahisi malaika amenivaa. I can go to the brother. Naweza kwenda kwa ndugu and his wife na mke wake and tell them the words they spoke in the bedroom. Na niwaambie maneno walionena chumbani kwao. They stand up crying in the church. Wanaanza kulia kanisani. How did pastor know that? Wachungaji wote wanajua hilo. How did he know that? Ah, wanasema mchungaji alijuaje hili? It's a promise Elisha that Elijah anointing must be on Elisha. Ni ahadi kwamba upako wa Elia lazima uwe juu ya Elisha. Elisha is a man. Elisha ni mtu. I can tell you what you speak in your bedroom. Atakaye kuambia kile ulichosema kwenye chumba chako cha ndani. Hallelujah. I was pastoring a church in another area. Nilikuwa nahudumia kanisa fulani mahali fulani. 100 kilometers from my home. Kilomita 100 kutoka nyumbani kwangu. But I left them now two years. Lakini nimewaacha kwa miaka mingi sasa. I'm getting old now. I can't travel up and down 100 kilometers Monday, Sunday, Wednesday. Kwa sababu nimekuwa mzee sasa siwezi kusafiri kilomita 100 kila siku. So we got another brother to run the church. Kwa hiyo nikamwacha ndugu mwingine aende na kanisa. There was a couple in the church. Kulikuwa na na watu walio wana kanisani. I think I said this to somebody. There was a couple in the church. Nadhani nisema ili kwa mtu fulani. Kulikuwa na watu walio wana kanisani. 
ni ndoa changa they had two sons walikuwa na watoto wawili and saturday night na jumamosi usiku the brother is telling his wife ndugu anamwambia mke wake you know what sweetheart unajua nini mpenzi i really like to have a girl child ninapenda kuwa na, ms- na mtoto wa kike and i like to keep a name jessica na ningependa kumpatia jina jessica saturday night at 11 o'clock in the night ijumamosi satano usiku and i stay hayo. 100 kilometers away na mimi naka kilomita 100 kutoka pale i pali. finish preach in the church in umkomas nimemaliza kuhubiri kanisa i was work like this nilikuwa nimeoana jinsi jump in my car nikaingia kwenye gari langu rushing now to the service nikaenda kwenye ibada nyingine by the time i got there wakati nimefika pale it was just time to end over ilikuwa ni wakati sasa wa ku wa kukaribisha muhudumu so the brother handed me the service kwa ndugu akani i opened my bible and i started preaching nikaanza kuhubiri while i was preaching wakati nahubiri the angel came malaika akaja and i walked down to the brother na nikatembea kwa yule ndugu and i said brother nikasema ndugu sister can you stand dada waweza kusimama last night at 11 o'clock jana usiku saa 5 you told your wife ulimwambia mke wako you would like to have a baby girl unapenda kuwa na msana wa kike mtoto wako you like to keep a name jessica na ulipenda umuite jina lake jessica i give it to you in the name of the lord jesus kwa jina la yesu kristo amina that sister fell pregnant Yule dada akapata mimba the baby was born na mtoto akazaliwa and the captain in Jessica na wakamuita jina yake Jessica the of William Branham is around brother wakasema William Branham ni yuko miongoni mwetu around hallelujah yuko yeah. miongoni mwetu hapa hallelujah keep the bride in line with the word anamweka bibi harusi kwenye mstari wa neno i'm not telling you stories here siwaambi hadithi hapa I'm talking about a supernatural god ninaongea kuhusu mungu wa kimbinguni make them self that can make himself no ambaye anaweza akajijulisha mungu so ever kwa yeyote it depends on your faith inategemea imani yako on your level inategemea kiwango chako he can perform things that you could never believe anaweza kutenda mambo ambayo usiwezi kuamini If you don't believe in the supernatural you will not have these experiences. Kama huamini mambo ya kiungu huwezi kupata haya matukio ya aina hii. There was another brother that was backslidden. Kulikuwa na ndugu mwingine aliyerudi nyuma. And he's big size like our precious brother here. Ni mkubwa kama ndugu yetu hapa. He was backslidden for many months he wasn't coming church. Alikuwa amerudi nyuma miezi mingi haji kanisani. And he was so disappointed. Na alikuwa amevunjwa moyo sana. And one night I think it was about 2 3 in the morning na usiku mmoja ilikuwa kama saa 8 au saa 9 went to a tree akaenda katika mti and he put a rope on there na akaweka kamba kwenye mti and he tied the rope akafunga ile kamba and he got himself upon something and he put the rope around his neck na akapanda kwenye kitu fulani akapitisha kamba shingoni mwake and mwaki. suddenly pastor chris comes there na ghafla mchungaji chris akatokea moses 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 You can see me but I'm not there. Anaweza kuniona mimi lakini mimi siko pale. Akatoa ile kamba. And I said Moses. Na nikasema Musa. What you never see I went through as a minister. Jambo ambalo hujawahi kuliona ni wewe kulipitia kama mchungaji. What you never see I went through. Jambo gani ambalo hujawahi kuliona ambalo sikulipitia? Did you ever see me go to the rope? Je, uliwe kuniona mimi nikienda kwenye kwenye so kwa what are you doing here? Yeah. So, kwa hiyo wewe unafanya nini hapa? He started crying and crying. Akaanza kulia kulia. And he went back. Akarudi. Now he's back in the church. Sasa amerudi kanisani. I'm not a ghost. I'm not a ghost. Mzimu mwingine. I'm not a witchcraft. Eh? Ah okay. Mimi sio mzimu au mimi sio uchawi. Huh? Yes. Hello? Hello? You see we we we're connecting with our theophany now. Unaona tunavyounganika na theophania zetu sasa. A son of man ministry came huduma ya mwanadamu ilikuja to connect us to our theophany. Kutuunganisha na theophania zetu. 
Hello, are you here? Jem ko apa? Are you here? Jem ko apa? I can give you hundreds of testimonies. Nineza ri ko apa mamia ya shuhuda. One sister in the church got pregnant. Dada mmoja kanisa na lipata mimba. And you know they went to the doctor. Wakaenda kwa daktari. And the doctor said you'll have a baby boy. Na daktari akamwambia utakuwa na mtoto wa kiume. So they started buying all blue clothes. Wakaanza kunua nguo za blue because it's a boy. Kwa sababu ni mwana ni mvulana. That brother Bianis family Familia ndugu Bianis. Oh whatever, right? And they were buying clothes all the time. We're getting a boy, we're getting. A... Walikuwa wanunua nguo za kiume kwa sababu walikuwa wanajua wanapata mtoto. Oh, it was the other way about. Au ilikuwa namna nyingine. But when I was praying, lakini wakati nilikuwa nikiomba, God told me not a boy, it's a girl. Bwana akaniambia sio mtoto wa kiume ni wa kike. So I went to the house. Nikaenda nyumbani kwao. And I said, guys, nikamwambia, jamani, you're not getting a boy, you're getting a girl. Hamtopata mtoto wa kiume mtapata wa kike. Dada kwa nje. Akasema mchungaji, saying boy. Akasema, "Wameona ni mwanaume." The photograph is saying boy. Ile picha ya ultrasound inaonyesha ni wa kiume. My photograph is saying girl. Nikasema, "Lakini picha yangu mimi ni wa kike." You want to believe? Ni ipi mnataka kuamini? You want to believe the machine or believe the supernatural photograph? Mnataka kuamini hii au hii ya kiungu? She said, "I, pastor, akasema mchungaji, I rather believe you than to believe what that machine is saying." Bora niamini picha yako wewe kuliko picha ya mashine aliyosema. When the child was born, mtoto alipozaliwa, it was a girl baby. Alikuwa mtoto wa kike. Our God lives, brother. Let me tell you there's not a person in our church. Ngoja nikwambie hakuna mtu kanisani kwetu. There's not a girl in our church. Hakuna binti kanisani kwetu. That is barren. Ambaye ni tasa au mbunga. Because we got a Melchizedek message. Kwa sababu tuna ujumbe wa Melchizedek. It lives brother. Melchizedek message. Ujumbe wa Melchizedek. It means that barren Sarah become fruitful. Ilifanya Sarah aliyekuwa tasa apate mimba apate mimba. We got the same message. Tuna ujumbe ule ule. I remember my eldest daughter, right? Nilikutana na na binti yangu mkubwa. When she was about 18. Alipokuwa na miaka 18. She had a problem with the ovary. Alikuwa na shida na mfuko wake wa uzazi. So they ovary. removed the ovaries. Kwa wakatoa yale ovary wakazitoa. They said otherwise it would turn to cancer. Wakasema vinginevyo vya tukizia just takuwa kansa. And everybody in the church knows. Na kila mmoja kanisani anajua. But there's one young brother in the church. Lakini kulikuwa na ndugu kijana kanisani. Maybe two, three years later. Miaka miwili mitatu baadaye. He came to me. Akaja. He said, "Pastor, can I see you?" Akaniambia mchungaji naweza kukuona. I said, "No, you welcome, son. You welcome." Nikamwambia, "Karibu kijana, karibu mwanangu." Let's see what's on your heart and what's in your mind. Hebu tukachuone kitu gani. Speak all that is in your heart. Nena yote aliyoko moyoni mwako. And then he said, "Pastor." Akasema mchungaji, "I don't know how to tell you." Sijui ni kwambieje. You see your girl, I love that girl. Unaona binti yako na mpenda yule binti. I said which girl? I got only two. Which one? Ni kwa na wawili nikwambia you you. Oh, I, I love that big girl. Akasema nampenda yule mkubwa. I said young man. Nikwambia kijana. Why don't you go and find another sister? Kwa nini usiende ukatafuta dada mwingine? That can give you children. Ambaye anaweza kupatia watoto. This girl they took the ovaries. Huyu binti yangu aliondoa ovary. She can have children. Hawezi kuwa na watoto. What do you want to do with her? Unataka kufanya nini hapo? He said pastor but I love this. Mchungaji lakini nampenda. I said no go go go. Nikamwambia hapana nenda nenda nenda. Go you're a man you must have children. Wewe ni mwanaume lazima ufanye na watoto. Tafuta dada mwingine upate watoto zao watoto. This one can't give you baby. Huyu hawezi kupatia watoto. I Maybe one month later he come back. Mwezi mmoja baadaye akaja. He says pastor. Akasema mchungaji. I'm only dreaming about her. Na muota yeye tu. I don't know what to do now. Sijui nifanye nini. You told me to go but I can't go this time. Uliniambia nienda lakini sasa hivi siwezi kwenda. This time I'm not going. Zamu hii na siendi. I want an answer. Namtaka huyu huyu. I said brother. Nikamwambia ndugu. She can't give you children. Hawezi kupa watoto. You gonna regret it. Uta utajutia. He says never mind. Akasema usijali. I want her. Namtaka hivyo hivyo. So I called my child. Nikamuita binti yangu. Nikamwambia huyu kijana anajisikia na kuhitaji. Basi unaweza kaombea hilo jambo afu tuone. Na ile binti akakubali. Wakaoana. Wakapata watoto. Hawakupata mtoto. Kwa kila siku anakuja nyumba kwa nyumba ya baba. Kwa sababu anakaa kwenye nyumba kama ile na sisi tunakaa hapa. So kila siku anakuja hapa. Analeta chakula anaongea na mama, mama yake. Siku moja alikuwa jikoni. 
baking or something. Akitengeneza kitu fulani. And I was in my prayer room in the back. Nilikuwa kwenye chumba changu cha maombi kitandani. And I got caught in the spirit. Nikakamatwa katika roho. Hello? Hello? I don't know whether you believe the message. Sijui kama mnaamini ujumbe. I got I got caught in the spirit. Nikaingia katika roho. Like an astronaut now. Nikawa kama kama mwanaanga sasa. I went right into the heaven. Nikaenda kwenye anga za kimbinguni. And I saw this girl. Nikamwona huyu bini. Having a baby boy. Akiwa na mvulana akiwa akizaa mvulana mtoto wa kiume. So I came wakiume. out from the prayer room. So nikatoka kwenye chumba cha maombi. I came right into the kitchen. Nikaenda kwenye chumba jikoni. Nikaenda jikoni kaweka mikono yangu kwenye chumba. And I said Sharon. Nikamwambia Sharon, the Lord loves you. Bwana anakupenda. You're going to have a baby boy. Utapata mtoto wa kiume. You see Sharon. Unaona Sharon? I'm not an artist. Mimi sio msanii. I don't know how to draw. Sijui jinsi ya kuchora. But you see that baby boy? Lakini unaona huyo mtoto wa kiume? You see I have a sister. Unaju, unaona na dada yangu? And my sister's son. Na mtoto wa dada yangu? Got a son. Alipata mtoto wa kiume. This boy, huyu mvulana. And that boy, na yule mvulana. They will look like twins. Walionekana kama mapacha. Wataonekana kama mapacha. So she started crying and she helped me. Akaanza kulia na akanishikilia. And she felt pregnant na akapata mimba. Amen. That baby boy was born. Yule mtoto wa kiume akazaliwa. And if you take that boy and this boy, na ukimchukua yule mvulana na huyu mvulana, hadi sasa hivi. He's 17 years old now. Ana miaka 17 sasa. You take that boy and this boy. Ukimchukua yule mvulana na huyu mvulana. You put them together. Uweke pamoja. They are twins. Ni mapacha ndugu yangu. Amen. You know that God. Unamjua yule Mungu. You know that Jehovah. Unamjua yule Jehovah. He don't see impossibles. Yeye haoni kutokuwezekana. He doesn't know that word impossible. Hana msamii wa kutokuwezekana. He only know the word possible. Yeye anao neno hilo ndio kuwezekana. Hajui kutokuwezekana. We dedicated that boy. Tulimweka wakati yule mvulana and he was growing na amekua 7 years later miaka 7 baadaye i was preaching in the service nilikuwa nahubiri ibadani and the angel came malaika akaja i went straight to her nikamwendea yule mvulana nikamwambia nipe mkono sweetheart you shake my hand nikamwambia mpenzi niko mke wako another boy nikamwendea binti nikamwambia utapata mwana mwingine she was slain over in the church alipata upako akaanguka kanisani and she fell pregnant na akapata mimi and she got a boy akapata mvulana is a handsome boy ni mvulana mtanashati i just hope that boy don't believe in polygamy <laughs> natamani huyo mvulana asije kuamini kuoa wake wengi kwa sababu ni mtanashati Fra- listen to this kosikiza hii is 11 years now ana miaka 11 sasa from 6 years old kutoka umri wa miaka 6 six o'clock in the morning he got his tie his suit is by the pastor's house saa 12 asubuhi amevaa suti yake na tai yake yuko kwenye mlango wa mchungaji kila jumapili he comes to help take the instruments to the church anakuja kusaidia kuchukua vifaa kupeleka kanisa 6 o'clock in the morning saa 12 asubuhi the service starts at half past 10 Ibada inaanza saa 4 na robo. But is here six o'clock dress. Lakini yeye anakuja amevaa vizuri saa 12 asubuhi. Na anaonekana nadhifu. That boy, yule mvulana, met the angel two times in the church. Amekutana na malaika mara mbili kanisani. Now he plays music in the church. Sasa anacheza vyombo vya muziki kanisani. Wandugu wakubwa wote wako pale. Lakini mvulana mdogo amekaa kwenye gitai. He's just blessed. Amebarikiwa. Every spoken word seed is blessed. Kila mzao wa neno lio neno amebarikiwa. Now what I'm telling you, yale ninayowaambia, everything that happened in brother Brennan's day and what you read in the book, yote yaliyotokea kwenye siku za ndugu Brennan na yeye unayosoma kwenye kitabu, is an example. 
ule ulikuwa ni mfano yale lazima tereka siku yetu yale lazima tereka kwenye family yale lazima tereka kwenye familia yetu haleluya that is history now ile ni historia sasa we want a present tense god Tunataka Mungu wa wakati wa sasa hivi. We must bring him from history to present. Lazima tumtoe kwenye historia tumlete wakati huu. Cancer must get healed. Kama mtu ana kansa lazima apone. People who got TB they must get healed. Kama mtu ana kifua kikuu lazima apone. Oh, this is must get healed. Magonjwa yote lazima yapone. People who haven't got the Holy Ghost Watu ambao hawajapata roho mtakatifu lazima wapate roho mtakatifu. Hallelujah. Oh my. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Because we following the same message. Kwa sababu tunafuata ujumbe ule ule. Now you see they came. Sasa unaona walikuja and they said sir. Wakasema bwana. We desire. Tunashauku. That we want to see Jesus. Kwamba tunataka tumuone Yesu. Ndugu yangu dada yangu. Let me let me try and compress the message. Ngoja nijaribu kuuminya ujumbe. You people in the message. Ninyi watu kwenye ujumbe. You get preachers and preachers and preachers and preachers. Na wahubiri 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 wahubiri. Convention and convention and convention and convention. Mikutano 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 mikutano. Now what message you never hear? Sasa ni ujumbe gani ambao hujawahi kusikia? All of you. Ni karibu jumbe zote mmesha. What sikia. message you never hear? Anie wote hapa, ni jumbe gani hujawahi kusikia? You heard the seals, umesikia mihuri? You heard the thunders, umesikia ngurumo? You heard the vials, umesikia vitasa? You heard the church angels, umesikia nyakati za kanisa? You heard the token, umesikia ishara? You heard dedication, umesikia kuweko wakfu? You heard Kusikia na kusikia na kusikia convention convention mkutano mkutano Are you tired now? Je, hamjachoka, hamjachoka. Hello, aren't you tired? Jamani hamjachoka. Somebody here, mtu fulani hapa. There should be some people here. Lazima ni watu wote. Let me say sir. Lazima I want to see Jesus. Bwana, nataka kuona Yesu. But now I want to see. Lakini sasa nataka kuona. Nimesikia. Nimesikia. Now I want to see. Lakini sasa nataka kuona. Hallelujah. Oh my. Amen. Granted Jesus. Brother Brian preach calling Jesus on the scene. Nabia rubi ujumbe leo kuita Jesus on the scene. Mtu fulani amuita Yesu jukwani. He said brother sister Alisema ndugu dada. I want to tell you. Nataka nikwambie. Let me take you back to the Tacoma meetings. Hebu niwarudishe kwenye mikutano ya Tacoma. And I want to show you why the Tacoma meetings Na, were so successful. Nataka nionyeshe kwa nini mikutano ya Tacoma ilifanikiwa sana. The reason sana. the Tacoma meetings were so successful. Sababu mikutano ya Tacoma ilifanikiwa. Because all the churches got together. Ni kwa sababu makanisa yote yalikuja pamoja. Kwenye kuomba na kufunga makanisa yote yakaja pamoja. Wakaweka matofauti yao pembeni. Wakaweka mafundisho pembeni. Wakaja pamoja. Fasting and prayer. Walikuwa na kufunga na kuomba. Walikuwa na kuomba. Walikuwa na muita Yesu jukwani. Haleluya. That's a convention brother. Huo ndio mkutano ndugu. That's what the bride revival is. Huo ndio mshi wa Biblia harusi ilicho. Without him Bila yeye we don't have no revival. Hatuna uamsho. It is him that brings a revival. Yeye analeta uamsho. Hallelujah. Calling Jesus. Calling Jesus. Yesu. Calling Jesus. Yesu. Every church. Hata kanisa. Kila kanisa kila jamii. Calling Jesus. Akimuita Yesu na akaja. Hallelujah. Oh my praise God. Oh, Let me thank tell you, you brother sister. Hebu ni kwambie ndugu dada. Mwaka 2019. Mwaka 2020. Myself and my wife we had covid. Mimi na mke wangu tulipata covid. We live in a place that is called New Haven. 
na tunaishi mahali panapoitwa new heaven au mbingu mpya. We are already in new heaven you still here in Tanzania. Sisi tunaishi kwenye mbingu mpya nyie bado mko Tanzania. We live in a circle. Tunaishi kama kwenye duara fulani. We are already in eternity. Tuko kwenye milele tayari. There's a circle around. Kuna duara. We stay there. Tunakaa pale. We were just hearing our neighbors dying. Tuko tunasikia majirani yetu wanakufa. Yule amekufa. Yule amekufa. Yule amekufa. The whole church knew. Kanisa lote lilijua. If God don't intervene, kama Mungu hatoingilia kati. We are both going to die. Wote wawili wataenda kufa. Our neighbors, our friends. Majirani zetu, marafiki zetu. Enemies. Ma adui zetu. The people that hated us. Watu waliotuchukia. We were bringing medicines. Walikuwa wanatuletea everything. Kila kitu to revive us. Kutu saidia kutuamsha nothing lakini hakuna kitu I remember all the young girls in my church they were coming to the room and they were cry nakumbuka mabinti wote kanisani walikuwa wanakuja kwenye chumba wanalia I, I, me, I never had strength to pick my hair mimi ndio nilikuwa naangalau nina nguvu ya kuinua sikuwa na nguvu ya kuinua mkono wangu to take two steps for me to take kupiga hatua mbili ili mimi nipige hatua mbili at least five minutes angalau dakika tano So I was sleeping in my prayer room. Nilikuwa nimeketi kwenye chumba cha maombi. And I said if anything happens. Nikasema chochote kama kitendeka. I would rather die in the prayer room. Bora nifie kwenye chumba cha maombi. Because that's the place I spent 95% of my life is in my prayer. Kwa sababu nina nina ninachukua au nina nigarimu 95% ya maisha yangu kwenye chumba cha maombi. So next door to the prayer room is our bedroom. Kwa hebu tuende kwenye chumba chetu cha maombi ndipo kitanda chetu kilipo. So for three nights kwa kwa Usiku siku tatu usiku. sit on the bed na kaa kitandani and the door was open slightly na mlango umefunguka kidogo hivi i can feel in my heart nilihisi moyoni mwangu that the lord jesus will come kwamba bwana yesu atakuja and in my heart na moyoni mwangu i knew nilijua if he doesn't come kama asipokuja both of us are going to die sisi wote wawili tutakufa So it was on a Wednesday night. So ilikuwa Jumatano usiku. It was about 11 o'clock. Ilikuwa kama saa 5 usiku. But I don't know if any of you all had uh, covid. Anybody had covid? Sijui kama kuna yote kati yao walio kupata covid oh, hapa. I was critical, right? Oh, nilikuwa na hali mbaya. My big daughter took charge of me. Na binti yangu mkubwa ndiye aliyenishughulikia. Ah, oh, brother, I can tell you. Ndugu naweza kukuambia. She wanted me to live. Alitaka niondoke. I can't Siwezi kula. Analeta chakula kicho sagwa. Anasema baba fungua mdomo wako. Na ana, analazimisha kile chakula ambacho yuko kama mchuzi ndani. Na anasukuma kijiko kingine. Ndugu nakwambia ninapata hasira lakini siwezi kufanya chochote. Na muangalia tu. Siwezi kufanya chochote. Na analazimisha mimi nile. Siwezi hata kuongea. So one night, kwa usiku mmoja, I woke up from the bed. Nikaamka kitandani. And I said, let me try and go into the next room. Nikasema ngoeni jaribu kwenda kwenye chumba kingine. It's just one wall that's separating. Ni ukuta mmoja tu unaotenganisha. So I just got up and I managed to go in. So niliweza nikafaulu kwenda. It took me a very very long time. Lakini ilinichukua muda mrefu sana. Because you can just make kwa sababu unapiga hatua kidogo hafu una, unatulia una. that, yeah, your breath was so little kwa sababu pumzi yako iko kidogo sana so i just went in the room and i sat on the bed so nienda kwenye kile chumba nikakaa kwenye kiti kwenye kitanda kulikuwa na njia ya kupita hapa na mke wangu alikuwa amelalia tumbo and then i said sweetheart nikasema mpenzi you know we lived a long life under the presence of god nikamwambia unajua tumeishi maisha marefu chini ya uwepo wa mungu and somehow it seems like our time is short na kwa namna fulani inaonekana muda wetu ni mdogo but i can say one word and wait ila naweza kusema neno moja afu nisubiri one word and wait neno moja nisubiri hivyo ndio hivyo kuwa then i said for three days now sasa kwa siku tatu sasa i'm expecting our lord to come Ninamtegemea bwana wetu aje. And if he doesn't come. Na kama haji. We are going to cross together now. Tutavuka pamoja ngamba. Both of us are switching dimensions. Wote sisi wawili tutabadilisha viwango. And I just said. Na nikakaa. Then I can hear the bed bed rumble. Ndipo nikasikia kitanda kama kinacheza cheza. Stand over. Yeye kumbe anakuwa anajigeuza. And then she's speaking one word at a time. 
She said, Chris, last night, Anasema, Chris, opita, during the morning time, one, two in the morning, at asubui, eh, usiku wa sa she sa said saba. that bedroom door was closed. Anasema, mlango wa chumba but she said, somebody opened the door. Lakini mtu ule mlango. And they came in the room. Na chumbani. So first, I thought it was you. Kwanza ni wewe. Then I thought carefully, Nipa kwa makini. And I realized you don't open the door like that. Na nikawaza wewe ufungui mlango You got jinsini. a very soft way of opening the door. Una njia yako eh, nzuri ya kufungua mlango. But this door opened very different. Lakini mlango umefunguka tofauti. So that worried me. Kwa hiyo kanitia wasiwasi. When I turn, nipo geuka, the side that you sleep, she sleep, this side and I sleep, that side. Yeye ana lao upande huu mimi na upande huu. The side that I sleep she said when she turned to look there she saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing there she said when he looked at me she said I can't explain that Anasema, siwezi kuelezea no hilo. language on the earth can explain hakuna, when he looked at me hakuna lugha ya kuelezea pale alipo nitazama alikuwa anatetemeka nilikuwa natetemeka na kutetemeka and i said sweetheart nikasema mpenzi we are out of covid now tu, sasa sisi tumetoka kwenye covid if he came here kama alikuja hapa he put a mark by the bedroom here ameweka alama bila kwa kama ya any time atakuja hapa wakati wote did you did you did you read the message doors in doors je uliwahi kusema ujume milango ndani ya mlango brother brother said you want him in the lounge Ndugu Brahma anasema unanikaribisha kwenye sebuleni? You want him in the kitchen? Unamtaka jikoni? You want him in the dining room? Unamtaka kwenye chumba chako cha chakula out your bedroom. Vipi kuhusu kitandani kwako? You open the door. Kwa nini usifungue mlango? You can come into your bedroom. Yaje kitandani kwako chumba chako cha chakula. Na aweke alama hapa. Hallelujah. Oh my. I'm out of there. Oh, and I got strength of preaching. <laughs> sasa naanza kuhubiri sasa. I went to Malawi in March. <laughs> Nienda Malawi mwezi wa 3. I was preaching in Malawi. Nilikuwa nahubiri Malawi. When I went back home, nika nirudi nyumbani. I got sick. Nikaumwa. So I had medication. Nikapata dawa. I don't like medication. But Sipendi. Wife says, Chris, I have this thing. Sipendi dawa. Mke wangu anambia Chris chukua hii. If there's no wife, no medication for me. Kama mke kama sina mke dawa sina. <laughs> Situmii dawa kwa maneno mengine. Yaani bila mke hatumii dawa. So I went back and I uh, got sick. I went to the doctor. Kwa hiyo nikarudi nikaumwa nikaenda kumuona so mgonjwa daktari. Nikapata dawa. It was helping me. Ilikuwa inanisaidia. Then I had a call from Pastor Kamarajie. Ndipo nikapata simu kutoka kwa mchungaji Kambaragi. come to Tanzania. Inabidi uje Tanzania. I didn't come to Tanzania because I am a preacher. Sikuja Tanzania kwa sababu mimi ni mhubiri. I didn't come to Tanzania because I want to come and preach. Sikuja Tanzania kwa sababu nataka nije kuhubiri. The Lord was telling me I must go to Tanzania. Bwana alikuwa ananiambia lazima nije Tanzania. But I don't know nobody in Tanzania. Sindi mtu yote Tanzania. So when I finish in Malawi, nilipomaliza Malawi, and I was leaving, na nilikuwa nikiondoka, my last stop, kituo changu cha mwisho, the pastor said to me you're not preaching. Mchungaji akaniambia hautahubiri. In eight days you preached 15 meetings. Kwa siku nane umehubiri mikutano 15. So you must be tired. Kwa ina itakuwa umechoka. I said no pastor, I can still preach. Nikasema hapana mchungaji naweza kuhubiri. He said no brother. Akasema hapana ndugu. Let me take you to the restaurant. Hebu nikupeleke kwenye I want to give you some hotel. Indian food now. Nataka nikupatie chakula cha Kihindi sasa. I want to take you to an Indian restaurant. Nataka nipeleke kwenye mgahawa wa Kihindi. That is in Lilongwe. Ambao uko Lilongwe. He took me there they gave me some curry. Akanipeleka pale wakanipa Indian food chakula cha kihindi and then he booked me in a hotel akaniwekea chumba hotel morning you take your flight back home 
Na akaniambia asubuhi utachukua ndege rudi Wakati ameketi kwenye meza nikasema mchungaji My heart is burning to go to Tanzania. Moyo wangu unawaka niende Tanzania. But I don't know nobody in Tanzania. Lakini simjui mtu yeyote Tanzania. I can't just land in Tanzania. Siwezi tu kwenda Tanzania. I got to know some believers there. Lazima nifahamu waamini pale. Lord wants me to go to Tanzania. Lakini Bwana anataka niende Tanzania. Then he said, "Oh, you want to go to Tanzania?" Ndio akasema, "Oh, unataka kwenda Tanzania?" Just wait. Akasema subiri. Akaangalia akaangalia simu yake. And he checked, check, check and he the pastor. na mchungaji. And that's how I am here in Tanzania now. Hiyo ndio sababu niko hapa Tanzania. So when I was here, wakati nikiwa hapa, I got very sick here. Niuma sana. Pastor Arnold and the doctor. Mchungaji Arnold na Dr. Uh, pastor Kambaraj and his wife. Na mchungaji Kambaraj na mke wake. They did everything to help me. Walifanya kila kitu kunisaidia. But I knew lakini nijua if i don't get out of tanzania nisipoondoka tanzania i'm going to die nitakufa hapa i knew that nilijua hilo so i was rushing to get out of kwa nilikuwa na harakisha niondoke but that one week i was here lakini kwa lile juma moja nilikuwa hapa i preached five meeting nilihubiri mikutano mitano and i'm preaching nilikuwa nilikuwa nafanya hivi afu nahubiri You remember pastor? Unakumbuka mchungaji? My pants were falling and I'm pulling it. Sura yangu ilikuwa inaanguka na ivuta. So when I got back home, niparudi nyumbani. It was Thursday. Ilikuwa Alhamis. And when my family saw my condition, na familia yangu ilipo na hali yangu. They took me straight same time to the hospital. Wakanichukua muda ule ule hospitali. So they admitted me. Wakanilaza. And they put me in the ICU. Wakaniweka kwenye chumba cha wagonjwa mahututi. The doctor told my family. Daktari akamwambia familia yangu. They put me Thursday. Waliweka Alhamis. And they said if your daddy comes through till Monday, awakasema kama baba yenu akifika Jumatatu, he will live atakuwa hai but many entered here with that condition lakini wengi waliingia hapa na hiyo hali and they never make it hawakufaulu so my family was under stress my wife was under stress familia yangu ilikuwa na hali ya pressure na mke wangu but in that icu lakini kwenye kile chumba cha mama mtu preaching to the nurses in the icu nilikuwa nawahubiria wahudumu wale wauguzi kwenye chumba cha wagonjwa mahututi They asked for some books and I gave them. Waliomba vitabu nikawapatia. You can ask Pastor Arnold, right? Unaweza kumuliza mchungaji Arnold. They took me to the hospital there. Walipanipeka hospitalini pale. And they put that pump on me and everything. Wakaniwekea vitu kila kitu. And they gave us medication they said right you can go. Na wakanipa dawa wakaniambia sasa unaweza kwenda. So the pastor and I are walking out. Kwa mchungaji Somebody called us. Na mtu fulani katuka. They said no you must see the doctor before you go. Wakasema hapana lazima unane na daktari kabla hujaondoka. So I'm sitting here the pastor sitting. Nikakaa hapa mchungaji amekaa hapa. The doctor is busy on the computer. Daktari anaangalia computer. And then she came she's holding my hand. Akaja kanishika mkono. And then I said uh, to the doctor I said ma'am. Nikamwambia daktari. My nails are this color. I don't know why your nails are blue. Nikamwambia kucha zangu zina rangi hii sijui kwa nini za kwako zini blue. Kuna shida mahali fulani. Then she laughed and she said no. Akacheka sema hapana. Then I said you go to church. Nikamwambia uende kanisani. Yes. Then I said she says oh me I love the Lord I'll do anything. Akasema mimi nampenda bwana nafanya chochote kwa bwana. Then I said have you heard of William Branham? Nikamuuliza umesikia kuhusu William Branham? William Branham the end time prophet. William Branham nabii wakati wa mwisho. She said no she never hear. Akasema hapana hajawahi kusikia. She said I like to know more. Akasema napenda kujua zaidi. The man sitting next to me is the pastor. Nikamwambia huyu anayekaa karibu yangu ni mchungaji. Number and he'll phone you. Yupe namba yako atakupigia. He'll share the message with you. Na atakupatia ujumbe. Brother, every moment I get ndugu kila dakika nayo what i mean the taxi niwe kwenye gari what i mean my car niwe kwenye gari yangu i only talk about the prophet na and the Lord Jesus Christ na bwana Yesu Kristo in my family hata kwenye familia yangu when we get together tunapokaa pamoja it's about the tapes ni kuhusu kanda about the books ni kuhusu vitabu it's about our prophet ni kuhusu nabii wetu nothing else hakuna kingine cha ziada So I'm out of the ICU now. Nilipo toka kwenye chumba cha wagonjwa mahututi. And I said now where are you going next? Mkiamko kasema unaenda wapi? I said I never finish in Tanzania. Nikamwambia sitamaliza Tanzania, narudi tena. God bless you brother sister. Mungu awabariki ndugu dada. Jesus asked the people at that time Yesu aliuliza watu wakati ule. The time when he was in the flesh. Wakati alikuwa katika mwili. Oh, I 
our time is gone can we stop or can we just continue a little bit more I know you're tired but I'm not tired I want to pray for all you people here tonight all the pastors are going to help me to pray for all of you tonight Jesus asked the people what have you come to see a prophet a reed shaken by the wind I say unto you he is more than a prophet but that quotation he is more than a prophet pertains to Elijah in our day John the Baptist was just a prophet he was a Elijah for that day but the Elijah for this day he was more than a prophet wow now tonight brother sister I am asking you what have you come to see I am asking you tonight what have you come to see have you come to see Jesus have you come to see Jesus what have you come to see? That's what I am asking tonight. Is the power cut? No, no, no. Did the power cut? Okay, the battery. Okay. What have you come to see? Brother Branham says when you go to church, if you go to see Jesus, you will find Jesus. If you go to find faults, you will find faults. If you go to show you better than somebody else, if you go to show you better than somebody else, you will become better than somebody else. But if you go to see Jesus, you will see Jesus. Are you like the Greeks tonight? Lord, I have heard. I have heard. I have heard. Lord, I have heard. Lord, I have heard that you are dwelling in men. Lord, I have heard that you're dwelling in man. Lord, I heard that seven seal revelation. But, but I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I'm believing it, but I'm not satisfied. I want to now see that God. Lord, can, can I see you? Where are you dwelling? Where are you dwelling? Somebody in the church sitting there and they said, Lord, please send, the pastor to me. please send the pastor to me and pray for me. This is what I want. I want a, Lord, I want a new name. They leave the pulpit and go straight to the person and I said, You told the Lord you want a new name, so I'm giving you a new name. That God is amongst us here. Bible says where two or three is gathered, I am there. So he he is here somewhere around here. He can't break his word. His word is an amen. The Lord can amen. I don't know. For me, this message is real. For me, this message is real. It's not pictures hanging on the walls. That pictures are in my heart. This Jesus that I serve took me out of darkness and put me in the light. And we are just enjoying this light. At thy word. Put it, brother, where are you? At thy word. Look at thy word. At thy word. At thy word. At thy word. Every person in the church. When I say something, they just say amen to that. And it comes to pass. When I say something, it comes to pass. That's the revelation between the sheep and the shepherd. So when your pastor speaks, you must say amen and say thank you pastor. You will watch that word. Where will come to pass. You must have a relationship. 
Lazima uwe na uhusiano. With your pastor. Na mchungaji you wako. must be confident. Lazima uwe na ujasiri. That is your shepherd. Kwamba yeye ni mchungaji the wako. Only voice you hear. Ni sauti Not yake pekee unayosikia. Sio sauti ya mtu mwingine. Sauti ya mchungaji when wako. He speaks, Anapo you ni. listen. Unasikiza. You see how prosperous you will be. Utaona jinsi tunavyofanikiwa. Bless you will be. Utaona utakavyobarikiwa. Yule mtu. That man. Yule mtu. Got the right. Ana haki. To send an angel to your door. Kumtuma malaika mlangoni pako. That man. Yule mtu. Has the right. Anayo haki. Before God. Mbele za Mungu. Because he's an ambassador. Kwa sababu ni ni, ni balozi. He can send an angel to your door. Anaweza kutuma malaika mlangoni. You deserve that. Kama unastahili hilo. Right. Anayo haki. Legal right. Haki ya kisheria. Many people speak of God. Watu wengi wanaanena kuhusu Mungu. And what an amazing thing to me friends. Na ni jambo la ajabu jinsi gani kwangu marafiki. That many times people people speaking of a God kwamba mara nyingi watu wanaanena kuhusu Mungu. No so little about him. Halafu wanajua kidogo sana kumuhusu. They speak of as wananena kuhusu hilo kama they know it as a joy wanaijua au wanamjua kama furaha and they know it as they are saved wanamjua kama wameokolewa they are wameokolewa ndio but when it comes to dealing with spiritual things lakini inapokuja kwenye kushughulika mambo kushughulikia mambo ya kiroho yeah what he says angalia cho sema together a different face anasema hiyo yote ni kama njia nyingine au mkondo mwingine au awamu nyingine yes kushughulika na mambo ya kiroho ni awamu nyingine unaona kanisani sasa tuna aina tatu za waamini kila kanisa kwa mchungaji yeye anawajibika kwa kondoo tu Anakuja. Anasema nilikuja nyumbani kwako jana ulikuwa wapi? Unasema nienda kumtembea dada fulani. Na kufundisha kitu fulani. Because there's three kinds of believers in the church. Kwa sababu ya aina tatu za waaminiyo kanisani. You're not supposed to run here, run here, run here. Anything you do. huku na huku na huku na huku. Anything you do. Chochote unachofanya. Pick up the phone and talk to your pastor. Chukua simu yako, zungumza na mchungaji wako. If you are married, kama umeoa au umeolewa, sister, dada, you can do n o t h i n g nothing. Huwezi kufanya chochote kama umeolewa without the consultation of your husband. Bila ruhusa au kumshirikisha mume wako. Hello sisters. Hello dada. I know you don't like it, but you are I'm Na, here to make sure you go in the rapture. Najua hamlipendi hilo lakini niko hapa kuhakikisha mnaenda kwenye unyakuo. You you can't do nothing. Wewe dada. You can't leave the house without him. Wewe dada ulioolewa, huwezi kufanya chochote. Huwezi kuondoka nyumbani bila yeye. I don't care whether it's your brother, your family or your father. I don't care you cannot do nothing without him. Sijali kama ni ndugu ni, ni mkulima au ni chochote sijali lakini huyo mume wako when, huwezi kufanya chochote bila yeye Hello Hello I it's not going down the sister Bado haijaingia kwa wadada I it's not going down Bado haijawaingia wadada But if you want to make the rapture Kama unataka kufaulu kwenye unyakuo You unyakuwa. must first find your place in this covenant Lazima upate mahali pako kwenye hili agano the covenant between husband and wife kuna agano kati ya mume na mke then you can keep that covenant with a covenant angel and you ndipo unaweza kudumisha hili agano na yule malaika kati yako wewe na malaika wa hilo agano if you can keep this covenant kama unaweza kudumisha hili agano then you can keep that covenant ndipo unaweza kutunza lile agano lingine brother branham says when you break this covenant ndugu branham anasema unapovunja hili agano break it with your husband unalivunja na mume wako and you break it with god na unalivunja na mungu now you see 
Sasa waone. One day if this young sister here yeah, are you married? Je, dada umeolewa? One day if this young sister are going to get married. Right? Wakati huyu dada ana, ana, anaolewa huyu huyu binti ndogo. I want to ask all of you, all of you here. Nataka niwaulize nyie wote hapa. She's going to get married to a brother. Ataenda kuolewa na ndugu. And she must make sure she, today's world. Hello? Hello? I don't know in Tanzania but in South Africa there's a lot of men look like women and women look like men. Sijui Tanzania lakini kule Afrika Kusini kuna wanaume wanaonekana kama wanawake na wanawake wanaonekana kama wanaume. So that's why when the sister want to marry a certain brother, ndio maana huyu dada anapotaka kuolewa na ndugu fulani. We must make sure he's a brother and not a sister. Lazima sisi tuhakikishe huyu anataka kumoa ni ndugu sio dada. That's why he must pass by the pastor. Ndiyo maana lazima aende kwa mchungaji. He has discernment. Mchungaji ana upambanuzi. This is not a joke. Who sio utani msikilize msikilize. Who sio utani? There's another young sister in Durban. Msilale sikizeni kuna dada kule Durban that goes to another church. Ambaye anaenda kwenye kanisa lingine. So I went to see a grandfather. Sasa niliena kumuona babu yake yule binti. And while I was talking. Nilipokuwa nikizungumza. This young sister was sitting in the lounge somewhere. Huyu dada alikuwa amekati mahali fulani. But while I'm talking to this grandfather. Wakati naongea na huyu babu yake. I'm feeling attracted to this young girl. Nasikia kuvutiwa kwa huyu binti. So I continue talking but Nikaendelea kuzungumza kinavutiwa huku. I can feel the pull. Nasikia kuvutwa. Then I said dad who's that girl? Nikamuuliza yule binti ni nani? He said my granddaughter. Akasema ni binti ni mjukuu wangu. I said can I chat with her? Akasema naweza kuongea naye? He said no problem he brought her and came. Akasema hamna shida akamuita kaja. We started talking. Tukaanza kuongea. She lost her dad about three years now. Alimpoteza baba yake kama miaka mitatu. Then I started talking. Nikaanza kuzungumza naye na kuzungumza naye. And you know the Bible says God will give you fathers. Unajua Biblia inasema Mungu atakupa baba. And all of us as ministers. Na sisi wote kama wahudumu. We must visit the widows and the fatherless. Lazima tuwatembelee wajane na wasio kuwa na baba mayatima. Na sisi watu wengine wote lazima tufanye hili pia. That is pure religion. Hiyo ndiyo dini safi. So I started getting close to this girl. Ndipo nikaanza kuongea na huyu bibi. Then she told her grandfather can you call the pastor again? Ndipo akamwambia babu so yake, nikamwambia babu yake, "Unataka so mpige mchungaji wake?" Nice when I talk to Pastor Chris. Najisikia vizuri nikiwa naongea na mchungaji. But she's in a messy church. Lakini huyu bibi yuko kwenye ujumbe, kanisa la so ujumbe. I went a few times and I was speaking to her. So nienda mara kadhaa nikawa na nena naye. Then there was a boy in the message. Ndipo kulikuwa na mvulana kwenye ujumbe. That she was liking alikuwa kama ye. and then while i was talking to her i just gave her some secrets nikampatia yule binti siri fulani to test kuhusu whether this is a boy or a girl kuhusu, kuhusu kujaribu kujua kama huyu ni mvulana au msichana and when she took my advice alipochukua ushauri wangu and she did a test na akafanya akaweka lile jaribu that is a girl akakuta yule mvulana ni msichana but he looks like a boy lakini anaonekana ni mvulana she cut off immediately akakatilia mbali moja kwa moja so one day when this sister sasa siku moja huyu dada uh, a brother finds her ndugu atampata huyu and listen to this msikize hii then she goes before she talk to that boy she go to the pastor kabla huyu binti hajaongea na huyu mvulana ataenda kwa mchungaji the pastor is a father of the church Mchungaji ni baba wa kanisa. The pastor is the husband to the church. Mchungaji ni mume wa kanisa. The church is a wife. Kanisa ni mke. That's why you can't go yet. Ndio sababu huwezi kuhama hama kanisa hapa na pale. Consult the pastor. Bila kumuhusisha mchungaji. The pastor mustn't come to church. Mchungaji How see la hawezi kuja tu kanisani I don't see that brother Simoni huyu I don't see that family Yaani mchungaji anakuja tu kanisani Simoni ndugu fulani Sioni kanisa fulani Sioni familia fulani anawauliza washirika That is wrong Hiyo ni makosa The minister must know everything Muhudumu lazima jue kila kitu Before you leave you must tell him Kabla hujaondoka lazima umwambie Sometimes you must ask him na mara nyingine lazima uombe ruhusa. Pastor can I go? Je, mchungaji naweza kwenda? And if he says no. Na akisema hapana. No. Ni hapana. He can save you from trouble. 
anaweza kukuokoa na shida. He can save you from an accident. Anaweza kukuokoa na ajali. If the angel said no, it's no. Kama malaika amesema hapana ni hapana. So the girl Excuse me. Eh huyu binti na mvulana. Listen to this now. Msikilize kwa makini. He goes and prays and he asks the Lord. Huyu binti ataenda kuomba muulize Bwana. Lord is it your will? Bwana ni mapenzi yako? This girl must marry that boy kwamba mchungaji anaenda kuomba bwana ni mapenzi yako kwamba huyu mvulana aoe huyu msichana you give me the revelation wewe Mungu nipe ufunuo she say she got a revelation huyu binti amesema na ufunuo he say he got a revelation huyu mvulana amesema na ufunuo but lord i cannot marry them lakini bwana siwezi kuwaozesha until you give me the revelation mpaka wewe umenipa ufunuo so when he gets a revelation kwa hiyo anapopata ufunuo then he agrees ndipo anakubali. Ah oh, this is a messy. Yeah. Huu ni ujumbe. You either live right or you live your own way. Ni either uishi sahihi au uishi kwa njia yako. So the pastor agrees. Mchungaji anakubali. Then he gets them together. Anawaita pamoja. And now they get married. Wanaoana. And the pastor tells that brother. Na mchungaji anamwambia yule ndugu. And he tells the sister. Na anamwambia dada. From today. Kuanzia leo. This man. Huyu mtu is your boss. Huyu mwanaume huyu ndio bosi wako. Is your ruler. Ndio mtawala wako. Is your husband. Ndio mume wako. You don't listen to your brother, your father, nobody from today. Wewe binti, usisikize ndugu yako, kaka yako au baba yako mzazi. All your traditions is over. Zile tamaduni zenu za jamii yenu zimeishia hapa. This man is your headship. Huyu mwanaume ndio kichwa chako. Msikize. Hello? Hello? Then he tells the boy. Halafu anamwambia huyu mvulana. For this cause, kwa sababu hii, shall a man mwanaume leave his father and mother. Atamwacha baba na mama yake. Sio mwanamke. Msikize. Mnasikia? You must leave your mother and father. Wewe mwanaume utamwacha baba na mama yako. Kuna kuwa na mpaka. Why you must leave? Kwa nini lazima umwache baba na mama yako? Because every time you have a problem with a sister. Kwa sababu kila wakati kuna shida na dada. Then you go tell your mother. Unaenda kumwambia mama yako. You know, mommy, mama unajua. the wrong girl. Nilioa msichana ambaye sio. You know, mommy, she's like this. Unajua mama yangu yuko hivi. She's like this. Huyu yuko hivi. Now the trouble starts between daughter-in-law and mother-in-law. Sasa shida itaanza kati ya mkwe na mama yake. Who starting the trouble? Nani alianzia shida? This young man. Huyu mwanaume ambaye hajui. Msikize kwa makini. Who starting the trouble? Ni nani alianzia shida? This young man. Huyu kijana asiyejua. Now this girl when she have problem. Sasa huyu binti akipata shida. She runs to her mother. Yeye naye anaenda kwa mama yake. Mommy. Mama, you know this guy. Unajua huyu mwanaume? Right. Haongei na mimi. You know mommy. Unajua mama? Hey, you are mommy's girl. Wewe ni, ni binti wa mama. Mtoto wa mama. Now we got mommy's girl. Sasa una mtoto wa binti wa mama. We got mommy's boy. Na mvulana wa mama. How he used to live in his house. Jinsi anavyoishi nyumbani kwake. He's bringing that rule in the marriage analeta taratibu na mambo ya nyumbani kwao kwenye hiyo na huyu wa kike alivyokuwa anaishi kwao analeta yale mambo yao kwenye hii ndoa na sasa tunapata matatizo msikize kwa makini hello 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 All you young brothers. Ninyi vijana. You must know your story. Lazima tujue story yako as yote. The, as the eagle stare the nest. Kama tai anavofurukutisha kiota chake. As the eagle stare the nest. Kama tai anavofurukutisha kiota chake. When the eagles get big. Tai anapokuwa mkubwa. What are you doing in your house 30 years old you still in your father's house? Wewe ndugu unafanya nini miaka kumi na tatu baada uko nyumbani kwenu kwa baba yako? What are you living of your fathers? Okay 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 sorry sorry. Wewe ndugu unafanya nini miaka 30 bado unaishi kwenye nyumba ya baba yako na mama yako? What are you eating your father's pension money? Kwa nini unakula pesa ya kustaafu ya baba yako? 
You supposed to get married long time. Ulipaswa uwe umeshaoa muda mrefu wewe ndio. Get out of the house. Toka nyumbani kwa baba yako. No, no brother Brandon said. Ndugu Brandon anasema. You must go make your own family. Wewe ndugu unapaswa wewe ukafanye ukaanzishe familia yako. Make your own children. Uwa, uzae watoto wako mwenyewe. And bring the grandchildren home. Na ulete wajukuu nyumbani kwa baba yako. And you sister. Na wewe dada. There's a Rebecca in the Bible. Kuna Rebecca kwenye Biblia. She left home. Aliondoka nyumbani. She left family. Aliacha familia. There's a root in the Bible. Kuna njia. That left home. Kuna Ruth kwenye Biblia aliacha nyumba. And went with her husband. Aliacha familia akaenda kwa mume. Msikize kwa makini. Now. Sasa any problem in the family shida yote kwenye familia between this girl kati ya huyu binti is this your daughter je huyu ni binti yako your looks say huyu ni huyu ni binti yako mnaonekana mnafahamu right sawa any problem this girl has shida yote huyu binti aliyetoka kwao kipata any problem that boy has shida yote yule mvulana kipata he must not discuss it with nobody hapaswi kujadiliana hiyo shida ya ndoa na mtu yeyote the man that held the girl mtu aliyemshika huyu mkono na mvulana mvula, aliyowashika hao wawili said what god joins together na yule mtu aliyesema kile ambacho Mungu ameunganisha let no man put a son wanadamu asikitenganishe brother brenner said ndugu brenner anasema marriage is the pastor's thing ndoa sikilizeni Ndoa ni jambo la mchungaji. Nobody in the church. Hakuna mtu yeyote kanisani. Can bring two people together. Anayeweza kuwaunganisha watu wawili pamoja. But the pastor has the wisdom. Isipokuwa mchungaji ndiye mwenye hekima. Not your family and your cousins. Sio familia yako, oh, binamu yako. Ndugu, if you are in this message. Kama uko kwenye mji. Stay line with the word. Kaa kwenye msali wa neno. Hallelujah. Your pastor will give you medication. Mtungaji atakupa dawa. And some marriages are chronic problems. Na baadhi ya ndoa zina matatizo makubwa ya kudumu. But that is a doctor. Zina baadhi ya ndoa zina sumu. They are chronic problems. Ah okay. Baadhi ya ndoa zina matatizo sugu. So there's problems all the time. Kwa hiyo kuna matatizo kila wakati hizo ndio zinazidi. doctor lakini mchungaji ni daktari. He'll give the medication. Anawapatia dawa. You don't need to leave the wife. Wewe ndugu, hupasi kumwacha mke wako. You don't need to leave the husband. Wewe dada, hupasi kumwacha mke wako. the doctor's medication. Nenda ukachukue dawa kwa daktari. And be praying for you. Na huyu akikuombea. But if you take it lakini ukiichukua kaenda huku na huku ndoa yako itavunjika kwa sababu hutoweza kushughulikia hilo tatizo right lakini ukilipeleka kwenye mkono sahihi right na ukadumu kwenye mkono sahihi you will be happy utakuwa mtu mwenye furaha successful utafanikiwa all the remedy dawa zote mau sister matibabu yote dada naongea na wewe all the remedy dawa zote for marriages kwa ajili ya ndoa is lying in the mess zipo kwenye ujumbe brother branham says sister ndugu branham anasema dada your husband is going to work in the morning mume wako anapoenda kazini asubuhi you must stand by the door lazima usimame mlangoni na lazima umbusu say goodbye useme kwa heri mume wako and brother you also na wewe ndugu pia before you leave kabla hujaondoka come to your wife njoo kwa mke wako mkumbatie mbusu and then you leave halafu ondoka prophet taught us that nabi alitufundisha hilo sister dada he says when the husband come from work wakati mume anarudi kutoka kazini you mustn't be with the same clothes when he went in the morning usiwe sikiza usiwe na nguo hizo hizo ulizovaa asubuhi wakati akienda kazini he said you must have a bath you must have a bath Unasikia? Sikiza, 
mnapaswa mume anaporudi wewe dada uwe umeoga you must do your hair up nicely umefanya nywele zako vizuri put a nice dress on umevaa nguo nzuri he says you must smell nice Nabii anasema unapaswa unukie vizuri. When he comes through the door, anapokuja mlangoni, you must just go to him. Una you must just go to him. Unaenda tu unamfuata. You must hug him. Unamkumbatia and say welcome. Na unamwambia karibu. Make him sit down. Unamfanya keti chini. Take the shoes out. Unamvua viatu. Dada. Brother say take the shoe out. Ndugu Brana anasema dada mvue mume wako viatu. And ask him. Na umuulize. Sweetheart. Mpenzi. Can I get you something to eat? Je, nikuletee kitu fulani cha kula? Or something to drink? Au cha kunywa? He says you must go sit down on his lap. Anasema nabii ni lazima uende uketi pajani pa mume wako. Na lazima yeye akushikilie. If you do exactly what the prophet said. Ukifanya hivi nabii anasema. will be successful. Ndoa zenu zitafanikiwa. You will have happy marriages. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise God. You will never go to bed one day disappointed. Na hutoenda kitandani hata siku moja ukiwa umevunjwa moyo. That doesn't only work for the young marriages. Sikilizeni. Sikilizeni. Hilo halihusu ndoa changa peke yake. To the older marriages. Kwa ndoa zenye umri mrefu. You see the me and me I watch them. Mimi wale wakongwe na waangalia. Wanapoenda kununua vitu ndugu yuko mbele na dada yuko nyuma Jamani msikize I know there's a problem there. Najua nikiona hivyo najua kuna shida kwenye hii ndoa Why the brother is there the sister is here Kwa nini ndugu yuko mbele alafu dada yuko nyuma They are not together now Hawako pamoja But when he's holding her by the hand Lakini anapomshikilia mkononi Even if she is old hata kama ni wazee. Ah, that's a husband and wife. Huyo ni mume na mke. He's taking a shopping now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow, wonderful. Brother Branham taught us about this marriage. Ndugu Branham alitufundisha kuhusu hizi ndoa na If I only knew this marriage the way I know it now. Kama ningeijua hii ndoa kabla ninavyoijua sasa hivi I am 66 years old Mimi na miaka 66 And my wife is five years younger than me Na mke wangu ana miaka mita, mitano chini yangu mimi But every day Lakini kila siku We live like the honeymoon Tunaishi kama fungate Every day kila siku We live like we are in the honeymoon Tunaishi kama tuko kwenye fungate We talk with love Tunaongea kwa upendo I go to bed I tickle her I play with her Ninaenda kitandani na mchezea na cheza naye Out of the bed <laughs> She is young man you feeling the same Hallelujah My One of us never feel ashamed for your wife brother Lazima ujisikie hivyo hivyo kwa mke wako ndugu yangu. got five children. Nina watoto watano. My youngest boy is 33 years old. Aibu kwa mkeo. Okay. Usijisikie aibu kwa mke wako. My youngest boy is 33 years old. Kijana wangu mdogo kuliko wote ana miaka 33. I think about two months ago. Ninawazia miezi miwili iliyopita. He came to me. Alinijia. And he said dad, akasema baba, I bought this ring for my wife. Nimenua hii pete kwa ajili ya mke wangu. Uh, he's a pastor there. Yeye ni mchungaji kule. And then he said because somebody broke into that house he bought and they stole all her stuff, not his stuff. Kwa akasema kwa sababu kuna mtu alivunja kwenye ile nyumba kaiba vitu vyote. It's amazing. Ina ni ya kustaajabisha. Kwenye ilikuwa kwenye meza. All the watches, all the rings, all the wallets was on the table. Kwenye meza yake saa zote mapete zote kila kitu vilikuwa kwenye meza. Waliiba vitu vyote vya mke wake lakini vya kwake hawakuiba. So he bought this ring. Kwa kaeta hii pete. And he came home. Na akaja nyumbani. And he said to his mother, can you please call dad from the prayer? Na akamwambia mamake unaweza kumuita baba kutoka kwenye chumba cha maombi. So I came and he said dad how are you doing? Akaja akasema baba naendeleaje nikasema. No, what shall I find and how are you doing? Nikasema naendea vizuri vipi? He said dad you know I know you busy but can you please pray for this? 
Akasema najua una mambo mengi lakini unaweza kuombea hii pete. So before you pray for the ring. Kwa kabla hujaombea pete. I would like to say something. Ndio kusema kitu fulani. Then I said proceed. Nikasema endelea. He said dad. Akasema baba. And mom. Na mama. Thank you for all the advice that you have given. Asanteni kwa ushauri wote mlionipatia. Dad. Baba, I know you was very hard on me. Najua ulikuwa mgumu sana kwangu. When I had issues with this wife, wakati nilikuwa na shida na huyu mke, just came down on me. Uli wewe ulinishambulia mimi tu. I cried. Nililia. I felt bad. Nilijisikia vibaya. But dad, it was a truth. Lakini baba ilikuwa kweli. Before you pray for this ring. Kabla hujaombea hii peti. I want to tell you and mommy. Nataka niwaambie wewe na mama. We have reached the seventh seal. Tumefika muhuri wa saba. Our marriage is a seventh seal marriage. Ndoa yetu ni ndoa ya muhuri wa saba. We have such peace and love. Tuna amani na upendo wa ajabu. I can't explain. Siwezi kuelezea. The presence of God lives with us. Uwepo wa Mungu unaishi pamoja nasi. Thank you dad for being so hard with me. Asante baba kwa kuwa mgumu kwangu. Meet me what I am today. Kwa kuwa mkali kwangu imenifanya niwe hivi leo. I just felt that Nikahisi ule uwepo. And the wife started crying. Na mke wake kaanza kulia. Nikawashika pamoja and I just prayed. Nikaomba. They are living without a flaw. Wanaishi bila shida. Without a problem. Bila tatizo. They are so excited. Wao wanafuraha sana. Not one day up and one day down. Sio siku moja wako juu siku nyingine wako chini. Seven seal marriage. Kuna ndoa ya muhuri wa saba. You are ready for the translation. Ambao uko tayari kwa ajili ya kujua. So you older brothers, kwa ninyi wa ndugu wazee, don't just leave the old lady there now. Usimwache mke wako mzee pale sasa. Now let me say this before I go to the post. Ngoja niseme ni kabla sijarudi mimbarani. Wakati nilipokuwa naweka na, natengeneza sera zangu. Zile sera zangu za za bima. Niliweka baadhi hapa. Baadhi kwa yule Baadhi kwa yule binti. Nyingine hapa nyingine pale. So when I went to read the marriage of the lamb. So nilipoenda kusoma harusi ya mwanakondoo. Na nilikuwa nasoma kile kitabu. Ndugu Brian anasema unapomuoa mwanamke kama huyo mwanamke atadumu mkweli kwa yale yote aliyoahidi baada ya miaka mingi na bado ni mwaminifu ndipo kila kitu ambacho ni cha kwako lazima kiwe cha kwake nikaenda kwenye Okay. I cancel. Okay. I cancel. Skiza. I cancel. I cancel. I put everything on her name. Okay. Let me explain. Skiza, yeye alikuwa ameandika mirathi kwa watoto wake kadha wa kadha ameweka hapa, ameweka hapa, ameweka hapa. Lakini aliposoma ujumbe, nabii anasema kwamba kama huyo mwanamke ameishi kikamilifu sawa sawa na kiapo chake. Na amekuwa mwaminifu maisha yake yote. Ule urithi wako wote ulionao unapaswa umuendee huyo mke wako. Aliposoma hivyo akaenda akaondoa yale mahusia wote, halafu akachukua yote akamwekea mke wake. Hello brothers. Hello wandugu. Put everything on your wife. Weka kila kitu kwa mke wako. Not your children. Si watoto wako. Because when the children get married, kwa sababu watoto watakapooa na kuolewa, they go. Wanaondoka. They go. Wanaondoka. They go. Wanaondoka. They go. Wanaondoka. Only one person is. Ni mtu mmoja tu anayebaki pale. And that is your wife. Na huyo ni mke wako. When you get old, unapokuwa mzee, your children won't come to help you. Watoto wako hawatakuja kukusaidia. Lakini mke yuko pale. Atakushikilia. Anakupeleke. No children. No Sio mtoto. Mke wako. Hello brothers. Hello wandugu. Cancel all the policies. Sasa nenda kwenye ule urithi uliokuwa umeandaa. Futa wote weka kwa mke wako. That's word. Hilo ni neno. That is word. Hiyo ni neno. Amen. We Amen. have to stay with the word. Lazima tukae na neno. If we never know it's fine but it's word. Kama hatujui ni sawa lakini ni neno. 
Sijui kwa nini nimekwama hapo sasa. Sijui kwa nini nimekwama hapo. When last did you all your older brothers when last did you tell your wife you love her? Ninyi wa ndugu wazee ni lini ulimwambia mke wako unampenda? Mara ya mwisho kumwambia unampenda mke wako ilikuwa lini? You buy suit, you buy shoes. Unanunua suit, unanunua viatu. When last did you buy a, a bouquet of flowers? Je, ni lini ulipomnunulia maua kama zawadi mke wako? Ninyi wazee. Sipati amina hata hii. When last did you take your wife to go somewhere to have supper? Ni lini ulipomchukua mke wako mkaenda mahali fulani nie wawili kula chakula cha jioni? Every day she's cooking. Kila siku anapika. Kila siku anapika. Kila siku anapika. Kila siku anapika nyumbani. Oh brother. Ah ndugu. Oh brother. Ndugu mzee. Ai ai. Ndugu. Hi brother. Oh ndugu yangu. Why don't you tell us we are tomorrow no cooking? Kwa nini usimwambie mpenzi kesho hamna kupika? I'm taking you for supper. Tomorrow. Nakupeleka tukale chakula cha jioni mahali pale. So hard man. Ume, umekuwa mzee sasa. You take care of the children. Umeshughulikia watoto. You wash the clothes. Umefua nguo. You clean the house. Umesafisha nyumba. You do so much. Unafanya mambo mengi. No, I'm going to take you. Sasa nakuchukua. You see how I do it brothers I want to tell you how I do it. Unajua jinsi nilivyofanya wa ndugu na nataka niambie. And all my children. Unajua nataka kuambia ninachofikiria. All my sons they Watoto wangu wote they learn out of me and my wife. Wamejifunza kutoka kwangu na mke wangu. I go preaching. Naenda kuhubiri. Then I go fishing for all week. Alafu naenda kuvua samaki juma lote. She, she packs everything. Na nikienda yeye ananiandalia kila kitu. If I take any one of you here to the room that I'm staying. Nikimchukua mmoja wenu hapa kwenye chumba ambacho mimi nakaa. If I open my suitcase. Na nikifungua, nikifungua sanduku langu kwenye chumba nilichofikia pale hotelini. open my suitcase. Nikifungua sanduku langu. You will see how neatly the clothes are packed. Mtaona jinsi nguo zimewekwa zime kinadhifu. She does not miss nothing. Yeye hakosi hata kitu hiki. She got tablets for pain. She got medication. An, anaweka dawa. Anaweka dawa za maumivu. Ah okay 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 dawa za maumivu. Yes. Carry on. Yes, continue. There's not a thing that she must. Hakuna kitu ambacho alikosa kuweka mle. And even when I go fishing. Hata nikienda kuvua. She gets a small bag. Anaweka anachukua begi dogo. Anaweka kahawa. Biskuti. Mau matunda. Kila kitu ninachopenda chocolate. All my favorite sweets. Vitu vyangu vinavyopenda vitamu vitamu anaweka pale. And even in my bag I got some sweets there. Hata kwenye begi langu sasa hivi kuna vitu vitamu mle. Kila kitu amenekea. Pizza kwa maneno mengi. So suddenly when I go back So ghafla nikirudi nyumbani maybe 2 3 days later labda siku tatu au mbili for her na i book to go out okay nina nina ninaenda na na toa taarifa kama naondoka and i just say sweet i'm going to have a rest now for a few days we'll come back home na anamwambia okay mpenzi nitapumzika saa siku tatu siku chache afu nitakuja nyumbani na ana pack zile nguo we get in the car we go okay kwa akirudi nyumbani anamwambia mpenzi tutaenda kupumzika kwa siku mbili tatu afu tarudi nyumbani now there no cooking sasa tukienda kule kwa siku mbili tatu hamna kupika. Lunch and supper no cooking. Chakula cha asubuhi, cha mchana, jioni mke hapiki. Because she's on holiday. Kwa sababu yeye yuko kwenye mapumziko. So suddenly when I take her for lunch, ko ghafla napompeleka kuanzia chakula cha mchana. And after having lunch, baada ya kila chakula cha mchana, the only thing we talk about. Jambo pekee tunalozungumzia is this message and Jesus Christ. Ni huu jumbe na Yesu Kristo. Don't talk about nobody and nothing. Hatuzungumzi kuhusu mtu yeyote au kitu kingine chochote. Our fellowship is based on the spoken word. Ushirika wetu 
So when we finish, I hold her by the hand. And I say, sweetheart, let's go. Let's walk through the mall now. Ah, oh, ladies sasa. like walking in the mall. Hey, they love that. They shake my hand. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Wanawake wanapenda sana kwenye maduka kwa ajili ya shopping. My, my legs are paining man. Mimi mwanaume miguu yangu inaumia. But she's not tired. Lakini yeye akiwa kwenye lile duka hachokagi. She's going in here. Yeah? Anaenda hapa. She's coming out again. Anatoka tena. Going in there. Anaenda nani pale? Coming out again. Anatoka tena. Coming back to the first shop. Anarudi tena kwenye duka la kwanza tena. Amina. But I go over there. Lakini namshika hivyo hivyo. She suffered with me all the time. Kwa sababu alisumbuka na mimi so I suffered with her. Na mimi sasa nasumbuka naye. Can I take her and I say okay sir. Hasa namchukua na. Just look so nice. Okay mpenzi, hii nguo inaonekana nzuri. If you put it it looks so nice. Ukiiva itakuwa nzuri sana. Okay let me buy this. Hebu ngoja ninunue hii. Let me buy the dress. Nanua hii nguo. Let me buy a shoe. Nanua kiatu. Let me buy another dress. Nanua nguo nyingine. Nanunua. Nanunua. She's a good wife. Ni mke mzuri. She deserves the best. Anastahili yaliyo bora. I buy the most expensive thing for her. Halafu ninamnunulia mambo ya thamani sana kwa ajili yake. When I bring her home, na hapo mleta nyumbani. I don't have problems for next one year. <laughs> na hapo mleta nyumbani kwa mwaka mzima ujao mbele sina shida yoyote tena. Are you here brothers? Je mko hapa wa ndugu? You must know how to live with her. Lazima ujue jinsi ya kuishi na mke wako. Wow. I teach the younger people in the church. Na wafundisha vijana kanisani. And we live such a wonderful life. Na tunaishi maisha ya ajabu sana. Every day I tell her sweetheart. Kila siku naambia mpenzi. Okay, good night. I got studying to do, right? Okay, usiku mwema naenda kusoma sasa. If I don't see you in the If I don't see you in the morning. Kama sitakuona asubuhi. If the Lord calls you before me. Kama Bwana kikuita kabla yangu. Remember I'll meet you at that gate. Kumbuka nitakutana naye kwenye geti la mashariki. And if he calls me before you. Na akinita mimi kabla yako. I'll be waiting at the gate. Nitakusubiri kwenye lile geti. We greet. Tunasali, tunaagana. And we to have to end the time. Hello wandugu. Hello. 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 Hello? Hello brothers. Hello wandugu. Amen. When you wake up in the morning, unapoamka asubuhi, you telling that brother, "Hello, good morning." Unaambia yule ndugu, "Hello habari za asubuhi." "Hello, good morning." "Hello habari za asubuhi." But you never greet your wife. Lakini mke wako humsalimi. Wonderful. You never greet your children. Watoto wako huwasalimi. But you saying, "Hello, good morning." Lakini majirani yuko busy. "Eh, za asubuhi majirani, mmeamkaje?" Wonderful. I, my wife she's fussy. Ma, mke wangu huwa anafunga. You see when I come there by the door and I'm going now and I say okay sure I'll give my bags I'm going. Nikija mlango nasema okay mpenzi nipe begi zangu naondoka. And if I just make Na nikifanya I'm going. Nikienda. She stand by the door. She... Anasema mlangoni ananitazama. When I put the bags in the car. Nikiweka begi kwenye gari. I come back here. Narudi hapa. I na namkumbatia sasa. And I give her a nice kiss. Na nambusu vizuri. Oh, she's happy. Sasa ana furaha. And when I go, na napoenda, she doesn't come by the door. Harudi tena mlangoni hapa. Then I know she's happy. Nipo najua amefurahi. Come on brothers. Oh, I'm doing it. Brother, brother I've taught us these things, man. Ndugu Brana wametufundisha haya mambo. We are going in the rapture of the day. Tuna kwenye unyakuo moja hapo ya siku hii. We must obey the prophet. Lazima tumtii nabii kwa haya. Wonderful brother. Oh my. God bless you. Right, let's go. And from that time, our time is gone. Muda wetu umekwenda. I don't know whether the pastor going to give me another time to preach. Where is he? Pastor, can you stand up? Mchungaji uko wapi? Simama. Sisi kama utanipa muda mwingine wa kuhubiri. Confess to them, are you going to give me another time? Hebu waambie utanipa muda mwingine wa kuhubiri au vipi? I'm not finished yet. Sijamaliza hapa. Tutakupa. He said they will give you another time to preach. The pastor made a confession he'll give me another time. Mchungaji amekiri atanipa wakati mwingine nihubiri. But let's read one more quotation, right? Lakini tuseme mkuu moja, nyingine. Thank you pastor. Asante mchungaji. Amen. Don't miss the service tomorrow, right? Sasa msikose ibada kesho.
Those of you that are wise tomorrow don't miss the meeting. Nie baadhieno ambao mna hekima kesho msikose mkutano. Morning and evening, right? Asubuhi na jioni, sawa? If I take the evening meeting, we're going to have a time of prayer for the sick and all the people. Baada ya mkutano wa jioni, tutakuwa na wakati wa maombi kwa ajili ya watu wote wagonjwa. For all the sick and the Holy Ghost and all that. Kwa ajili ya wagonjwa na Roho Mtakatifu na kila kitu. Believe me God is going to give it to you. Niambini mimi Mungu atakupatia. I believe that. Naamini hilo. Give it to you. Atakupatia. Let's read a quotation. Hebu tusome hii nuku. When a man meets God. Mtu anapomkosa Mungu. Before you read that quote. Kabla tujasoma hii. When a man or a woman meets God. Wakati mwanaume au mwanamke anapomkosa Mungu. They become a superman. Anaf... Wakati mwanaume au mwanamke anapokutana na Mungu, when anafanyika I... mtu mkuu au mtu super. Are you hearing? Mnasikia? When a man or a woman meets God. Wakati mwanaume au mwanamke anapokutana na Mungu, they become a superman. Anakuwa mtu super. Takes, au asiyo wa kawaida. It takes that person anamchukua yule mtu and makes him part of the super race alafu Mungu anamfanya awe sehemu ya jamii super au iliyo bora kuliko zote he makes him part of the super church anamfanya huyu mtu awe sehemu ya kanisa super kuliko yote au kanisa bora kuliko yote that's the church that is going in the rapture hilo ndio kanisa linaloenda kwenye unyakuu so i want you to understand nataka muelewe you must Lazima meet God. Ukutane na Mungu. Somehow brother. Kwa namna fulani ndivyo. Somehow sister. Kwa namna fulani dada. You must meet God. Lazima ukutane na Mungu. Sister, let me shake your hand, right? Dada ngoja nikupe mkono. You see as a believer. Unamwona wewe kama mwanamke. God can meet you anytime. Mungu anaweza kukutana wewe wakati wowote. Trust in your soul. Kama utaamini kwa nafsi yako. Nafsi yako lazima ilie. Kama haijawahi kulia. Ni swala la uzima na mauti. Kwa kila kitu mtoto dada. Hupasi kushishwa moyo. Usiruhusu mtu wote akutishishe moyo. Usishishwe moyo. You are a child of a king. Wewe ni mtoto wa mfalme. Utapata kutembea na Mungu. Mungu ata whole life to God. Ma, ma yote. Your problems one side. Matatizo yote yataisha. Time I come back. Wakati merudi. You will tell me pastor. Wewe ni mtendaji of the Lord. Umekutana na malaika wa Bwana. Hallelujah. Temptation day brother. Weka hiyo nukuu ndugu. Hallelujah. Wonderful. I'm not going to heaven because your brother Branham is experience. Sitaenda mbinguni kwa sababu ya ujuzi wa ndugu Branham. You not gonna make it through because of my experience. Wala wewe hutaenda mbinguni kwa sababu ya ujuzi wako. You need your own experience. Unahitaji ujuzi wako mwenyewe. Every in here. Kila mtu ana experience. Anahitaji ujuzi wake mwenyewe au tukio lake mwenyewe la Mungu. The angel is here. Malaika yuko hapa. That's why the angel came down. Ndio maana malaika alishuka chini. The Bible says Enoch. Na Biblia inasema Enoch. Walked toward God. Alitembea na Mungu. And walked no more. Na a, katika kutembea kwake hakuonekana tena. You cannot walk toward God. Huwezi kutembea na Mungu. Because the Bible says. Sa Biblia inasema. How can two walk together? Wawili wanaweza wanawezaje kutembea pamoja? Unless they be agreed. Isipokuwa kwanza wametatana. So So brother, sister, dada, you need the cleansing of the blood. Unahitaji kusafishwa kwa damu. You need to possess the divine nature. Unahitaji kumiliki asili ya uungu. Your nature and his nature must connect. Asili yako na ya kwake lazima viungane. And then you can walk with him. Ndipo unaweza kutembea naye. Brother Brandon said, Nikubana mwanasema. Amen. Mwanaume cannot correctly love his wife. Hawezi, mwanaume hawezi kumpenda mke wake kisahihi unless she has his nature. 
Isipokuwa huyo mwanamke awe na asili ya huyu mwanamume. Anapokuwa na asili ya huyu mwanamume. He can love her correctly. Anaweza kumpenda vizuri. So all your sisters yeah. Kwa wadada wote hapa. Need to become part of your husband. Ninyi wadada wote hapa mnatakiwa muwe sehemu za waume zenu. Now your marriage works like this. Sasa ndoa yako inafanya kazi namna hii. For this cause kwa sababu hii so kwa sababu hii ndi, hii sababu ndiyo mwanaume atamwacha baba yake baba yake na mama yake baada ya kumwacha halafu atangangania atangangana kwa mke wake ndipo hawa wawili wanakuwa mwili mmoja marriage is a three stage thing ndoa ni kitu cha hatua tatu Before you go into marriage, kabla ujaenda kwenye ndoa, it is a three stage thing. Ni jambo la hatua tatu. Marriage of the lamb. Harusi ya mwana kondoo. He says first, alisema kwanza, you make a decision, unafanya maamuzi. After decision, baada ya maamuzi, you have engagement, unakuwa na posa. After engagement, baada ya posa, you have marriage. Una ndoa. Now after marriage, baada ya ndoa, three stages. Hatu tatu. Leave, ishi, cleave, ngangania. Then you become one flesh. Au ambatana. Okay. Ishi ambatana kuwa mmoja. All understand? Sometimes it takes years. Okay. Good that you okay hivi. Baada ya ndoa hatu tatu. Achana ambatana kuwa mmoja. Amina it takes years to become one flesh. Inahitaji miaka mingi kufanyika mwili mmoja. Sio siku moja. Now listen to what the prophet says. Sikiza nabii anachosema. If this cannot be done, hi hata hii haiwezi kufanyika. If you cannot meet God, kama huwezi kukutana na Mungu. Why would the prophet tell us that? Kwa nini nabii anatuambia hivi hapa? But there is a place lakini kuna mahali where a man can come ambapo mwanaume au mtu anaweza kuja There is a place kuna mahali where kuna a sehemu can come ambapo mtu anaweza kuja ipo sehemu to a time kwa wakati that will change him forever ambapo itambadilisha milele eternal milele daima Kunao wakati. Mchungaji kutoka Kongo alikuwa anasema. Mtu pekee anaweza kujua umebadilika au hujabadilika. Unaweza kumdanganya kila mtu na yote. Lakini huwezi kumdanganya mke wako. Yule huo ni msemo halisi wa kweli. Only your wife knows. Mkeo pekee ndiye anayejua. But you change or you didn't change. Kama umebadilika au hujabadilika. And it's vice versa. Na kinyume chake ni ukweli. Only the husband knows. Mume pekee ndiye anayejua. But this woman is changed. Kama huyu mwanamke amebadilika au hajabadilika, mume anajua. Hello? Je? Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. You are changed forever. Umebadilika milele eternal milele he that will come to me yeye atakaye kuja kwangu i will no wise cast out kwa namna yoyote sitomtupa nje said jesus alisema yesu no man can come to god hakuna mtu anaweza kuja kwa mungu and his whole eternal destination is changed mtu anaweza kuja kwa mungu na kikomo chake cha milele kibadilike and a man can meet god na mtu anaweza kutana na Mungu and he can never be the same anymore. Na hawezi kuwa mtu yule yule tena kamwe milele. Brother, ndugu, you can run from church to church. Unaweza hama kanisa hata you can kanisa. Run from place to place. Unaweza hama sehemu hata sehemu. Why do you want to leave your church and go to another church? Kwa nini unataka kuacha kanisa hili uende kwa lingine? They preaching the same message. Wanahubiri ujumbe ule. Why do you want to leave that church and go to another church? Kwa nini unataka kuacha hilo kanisa uende kwenye lile? They preaching the same message. Wanahubiri ujumbe huo huo. Hello? 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 
back you in the same message. Kwa nataka kuhama huku na huku wakati tuko kwenye ujumbe huu mmoja. Shida ni nini? Is that church got another message? Je, lile kanisa lina ujumbe mwingine? So what's your problem? Kwa shida ni nini? So when we come together in the convention. Tunapokuja pamoja kwenye mkutano. Then you shake hands, you say brother God bless you. Ndipo nasema ndugu mkakubariki. I'm missing you brother. Nina wa, nina wakumbuka ndugu zangu. Why did you leave in the first place? Now you saying you missing. Kwa nini uliondoka? Halafu sasa hivi unasema na wakumbuka. Every church going to have problems. Kila kanisa lina matatizo. So it's better to stay where you are. Kwa ni bora ukae mahali ulipo. Support the work of the Lord. Unga mkono kazi ya Bwana. Stand with your pastor. Kaa na mchungaji wako. And your pastor will see you through. Na mchungaji wako atakufanya ufaidi. You understand that? Melewa hilo. The pastor will see you through the rapture. Mchungaji wako atakufanikisha kwenye unyakuo. Totally yeah. Sio hapa tu. He will see you through the rapture. Atakufanikisha kwenye unyakuo. Unahama huku na hama huku. Oh my. Mchungaji labda unaweza kuwa kama mimi. Nataka nyote nyie wachungaji mwe kama mimi. Wewe ni mchungaji? Wewe ni mchungaji? Ngoja nimpe huyu mkono. Huyu ni Gabriel, huyu ni malaika. And his name is Gabriel also. Are you listening? Jem nasikia? I cannot pastor other people's sheep. Siwezi kuwa mchungaji wa kondoo wa mtu mwingine. I can only pastor my sheep. Ninaweza kuwa mchungaji wa kondoo wangu peke yangu. Siwezi kuwa mchungaji wa kondoo wa mtu mwingine. So Kwa napita tu kwenye makusanyiko. Nasema ndugu dada. Nimeona umekuja kanisa lakini hukuonekana una furaha. Kwa una shida gani? Nipe mkono. Go to your own pastor. Nenda kwa mchungaji wako. Mchungaji wako ni nani? Pastor Arnold. Mchungaji Arnold. Go to your pastor. Nenda kwa mchungaji wako. I don't have no problem. Ha, kuna shida. When I pray, napoomba, I say Lord, nasema Bwana, send my sheep to me. Nitumie kondoo wangu waje kwangu. People are just coming to church from nowhere. Watu wanakuja tu kanisani kutoka mahali popote. And I'm leading them. Na ninawaongoza. Siwezi kuongoza kondoo wa mtu mwingine. My sheep hear my voice. Kondoo wangu wanasikia sauti That's yangu. That's our sheep. Hiyo ni kondoo, hao ni kondoo. Brother, somebody don't listen to your. Kama kuna mtu ambaye hakusikilizi. Just tell them please. Mwambie tafadhali. Go to your pastor. Nenda kwa mchungaji wako. Amen. You won't have no problem brother. na matatizo ndugu. No issues. Hakuna shida. No questions. Hakuna maswali. People will love you brother. Watu watakupenda ndugu. They will serve your word is their life. Watasema neno lao lako ni maisha yao au uzima wao. And when you see them later they so happy now. Na ukiona baadaye wana furaha sasa. And you don't have no ingredients. Na wewe utakuwa huna chuki yoyote au nyongo yoyote. Nasema dada na furai ndugu na furai kwa ajili yako, na furai kwa ajili yako. Ana? I tell the people in my church if there's anybody here that's not happy, please leave. Naambia watu kanisani kwangu, yeyote ambaye hafurahi kuwa hapa, aondoke. Kuna mlango mkubwa pale. You are not forced to stay here. Wala ulazimishi kukaa hapa. But if you stay here, lakini kama unakaa hapa, you gonna listen to me. Inakubidi unisikilize. You gonna follow the standard of the message. Ni lazima ufate kiwango cha ujumbe. What Malachi for said works here. Kile ambacho Malachi kina alisema ndio kinachofanya kazi hapa. If you not happy, kama una furaha, she does a double door for you. Kuna mlango wa kuna mlango miwili kwa kuna mlango ambao unafunguka mara mbili kwa ajili yako. Nimekuwa na ushirika na wewe. Umenikaribisha watu kinikaribisha kwa chakula cha jioni tutakuja. Bado ni wandugu na dada. Only thing. Hata ukiondoka tutaendelea kuwa wandugu na wadada. Only thing. Kitu pekee. I'm not your pastor. Sio mchungaji. Mimi sio mchungaji wako. Mimi ni ndugu yako. Hiyo tu do that in Congo. You don't waste time with them brother. 
Wewe ndugu kule Congo usipoteze muda. I haven't been to Congo, but one day, kuwa Congo. one day the Lord will send me. Lakini siku moja Bwana atanituma kule. Don't hold nobody behind. Natumaini hakuna mtu atakuwa kama. God will bless you more. Mungu atakubariki sana. When you just stick you and the message becomes one. Ambapo wewe na ujumbe mtakuwa mmoja. Yeah that. He said your eternal destination is changed. Kikomo chako cha milele kinabadilika. A man can meet God. Mtu anaweza kutana na Mungu. He can never be the same anymore. Na anaweza akawa sio yule yule tena. You, you can't meet God. Huwezi kukutana na Mungu. Then ever remain the same person you are. Na ubaki vile vile ulivyokuwa. Ubaki mtu yule yule. Haiwezekani. Sitaki tu kuwa kwenye kanisa niwe nafuata ujumbe nasoma ujumbe na soma nuku. Unajua ndugu Brana alisema hivi, ndugu Brana amesema hivi. Hayo yote stories za ndugu Brana zote nazisikia. Yale yote ya ndugu Brana amni his story historia. Hello? Hello? Are you the same God? Lakini huyu Mungu ni Mungu yule yule. He's not William Branham. William Branham died. Huyu Mungu sio William Branham. William Branham alikufa. But God is still God. Lakini Mungu bado ni Mungu. So if he met brother Branham, kwa hiyo kama then I have the opportunity Branham, to meet him also. Kama alikutana ndugu Branham, ndipo na mimi nitakutana naye pia. There's a quotation here. Kuna nukuu hapa. That you have an opportunity kwamba unayo fursa to meet God personally. Kukutana na Mungu kidi wale who sitting here. Kila mmoja ni opportunity. Hii ni fursa. Nisikilizeni. Nisikie ninavyofanya. I take that quotation. Nachukua hiyo nukuu. Na napiga magoti. Hivyo ndugu Brana alisema napaswa ufanye. Unampatia neno lake. Unampa neno lake mwenyewe. Kwa nachukua hiyo nukuu. Na napoomba nasema Bwana ulisema hivi. Amen. Ulisema hivi. Sasa hebu hebu thibitisha neno lako. Amen. You present his word to him. Unampelekea neno lake kwake. And you said you will meet me. Na wewe ulisema utakutana na mimi. I'm not happy just being in a message. Mimi sifurahi tu kwa kwenye ujumbe. Na kusoma na kusoma. I want this message to be real. Nataka huu ujumbe uwe sahihi, uwe halisi. You must visit me. Sasa lazima unitembelee. The prophet said. Kwa sababu nabii alisema, wewe unaweza kanitembelea. Sasa nataka unitembelee. Anything brother. Chochote ndugu. I said anything. Nasema chochote. What the prophet said. Chochote nabii alichosema. This what God said. Ni kila macho Mungu alisema. That thing before him. Sasa mpelekee hicho. You say Lord you told me that. Na usema Bwana uliniambia hivi. You told me that. Bwana uliniambia hivi. God will keep his word. Mungu atadumisha neno lake. Amina. See that? Amina. He says you can never remain the same person you was. Anasema uwezi kubakia mtu yule yule aliyekuwa. If you turn away from him, kama ukiondoka kutoka kwake, you will be a worse person that you ever were. Kama ukimuondokea, utakuwa mtu mbaya kuliko wote uliokuwa. If you receive him, kama ukimpokea you got eternal life una uzima wa milele he raise you up at the last day atakufufua siku ya mwisho by the promise kwa ay, kwa ahadi yake when you got eternal life ukiwa na uzima wa milele he will raise you up in the last day atakufufua siku ya mwisho he raise you up now anakufufua sasa and he will raise you up again in the Na resurrection tena kwenye ufufuo that's what he promised hicho ndicho alichoahidi now i am asking sasa nakuuliza was the pillar of fire only for william branham je nguzo ya moto ilikuwa kwa ajili ya william branham peke yake was god only for william branham je mungu alikuwa kwa ajili ya william branham peke yake is this quotation wrong je hii nukuu ina makosa i'm just asking nauliza 
There's a sister back home. Kuna dada kule nyumbani. She was an unbeliever. Alikuwa si amini. And the Lord spoke to her in a dream. Na Bwana kamnenea kule ndoto. About Revelation 10:7. Kuhusu ufunuo 17. And the thunder that is being uttered. Na ngurumo zikinguruma. So she woke up and she don't know what that means. Akainu akafu akaamka ka anashangaa. Yeah, a neighbor is a sister in our church. Jirani yake ni dada kanisani kwetu. And she went to the neighbor. Akaenda kwa ile jirani. She said this is what I dream. Na kasema hiki ndicho ndicho wata. So what is a thunder? Sasa nguruma ni nini? So the sister said I'll call the pastor. Dada kaambia nitampigia mchungaji. So I went there. Kwa nikaenda pale. And I sat down. Nikakaa chini. And I said sister, I think you had a dream. Kaambia dada naamini kuwa na ndoto. You see? You see when I pray? Nasema unaona niliomba? Nikasema bwana. I'm tired now. Nimechoka sasa. I can't go everywhere. I'm not a young man. Siwezi kwenda mahali kila mahali mimi sio kijana mdogo. Nimechoka. I'm working for many years. Na nimetembea miaka mingi sasa. Unajua katika siku za Nuhu roho alipotembea juu ya wanyama na akawaleta kwenye safina Sasa tuma huyo roho mahali hapa Hebu aje na alete mbegu au mzao wa Ibrahim kwenye hii kanisa hapa Hello 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 I started explaining the sister. Nikaanza kumuelezea yule dada. She said she saw my son Joshua standing there. Akasema alimuona mtoto wangu Joshua amesimama pale. Na yeye amesimama hapa. And the cloud is from him covering me and covering him. Na wingu linatoka kwake likimfunika yeye na mimi. And the church is under the cloud. Na kanisa liko chini ya wingu. There's a light shining from that cloud. Kuna nuru inaangaza kutoka kwenye wingu. So she said pastor what does this mean? Akasema mchungaji hii inamaanisha nini? I said all this means is that you need to come to pastor Chris's church. Nikamwambia hii inamaanisha kwamba inabidi uje kwenye kanisa la mchungaji Chris. Akasema mimi sio mkristo. I said that vision going to convert you and make you a Christian. Nikamwambia lile ono litakufanya uwe mkristo. So eventually after a few months, baada ya miezi kadhaa, she decided to go to church. Akaamua kuja kanisani. Because she heard in Pastor Chris's church no cutting hair, no makeup, no shoes, no eye shoes, no funny hair style. She heard that. The whole area no. Kwa sababu alisikia eneo lote linajua kwenye kanisa la mchungaji Chris hakuna kukata nywele, hakuna kuvaa mavazi ya ajabu, hakuna viatu vyenye mchuchumio mrefu hakuna mambo yote ya upuzi katika kanisa la mchungaji Chris. So she wants to be a Christian. Ko alitaka kuwa mkristo. But she can't come to this church. Lakini yeye hawezi kuja kwenye hili kanisa kwa sababu ya hayo mambo. She went to another church. Kwa kaenda kwenye kanisa lingine. What does a lady pastor? Ambapo kwenye hilo kanisa kuna mchungaji mwanamke. And she was enjoying that lady preaching. Na alikuwa anamfurahia yule mwanamke akihubiri. And then she started going with the sisters praying na, everywhere. Na akaanza kwenda na wale wa mabinti wakiomba kila mahali. Then her husband. Ndipo mume wake. He's an elder in another church. Yeye ni mzee kwenye kanisa lingine. And every time he comes I behind my house is a big ground. Na nyuma ya nyumba yangu kuna uwanja mkubwa. Now that brother is an evangelist. Sasa yule ndugu ni mwinjilisti. So every time he put the speakers there. Kwa kila wakati akiweka speaker kule. And I see through my window. Na naona kupitia dirishani. And I always kneel down and pray. Maana wana piga magoti naomba. And I say Lord there's a brother there. Nasema Bwana kuna ndugu pale. He's pana. doing something that I can't do. Lord. Anafanya kitu ambacho siwezi kufanya. You know he's preaching the gospel of Jesus. Anahubiri injili ya Yesu Kristo. If one soul can come Lord. Kama nafsi moja inaweza kuja Bwana. I'll say thank you to you. Nitasema asante kwa. I will pray for that brother all the time. Nitamwombea yule ndugu mara zote. So eventually the sister Kwa sasa hatimaye huyu dada. This brother started having an issue about the church. Yeye na ndugu wakaanza kuwa na shida kuhusu kanisa. Then she called me. Akanipigia huyu dada. I went there. Nikaenda pale. I started opening the message of the hour. Nikafungua ujumbe wa saa, nikafungua ujumbe wa saa. Wote walikuwa wanajifunza. For three months. Kwa miezi mitatu. They were learning the message. Walikuwa wanajifunza ujumbe. So now they got a problem. Sasa wana shida. I told them now after you know the truth. Nikamwambia sasa baada ya kuwa mnajua kweli. If you don't obey. Kama msipoiti. It is iniquity. Ni uovu. So I leave them. Nikaondoka. So both of them had a meeting. Wote wakakutana. So the sister said I made up my mind. Dada akasema nimeamua naenda kwenye kanisa la Pastor Chris. So he said you know what? Kwa akasema unajua nini? Siwezi kuja pale sasa. I am an elder in my church. Mimi ni mzee kanisani kwangu. But you know what I'll do? Lakini unajua nitafanya nini? I'll go first to my church. Tena kanisani kwangu kwanza. And then I'll come to that church. Halafu nije kwenye hii kanisa. That was Friday about 12 o'clock. Hiyo ilikuwa ni kama Jumatatu Jumatatu saa 6. They decided that. 
wakaamua hilo I stay about 300 meters from their home Na kaka kama mita 300 kutoka nyumbani kwao I was in the study Nilikuwa nasoma And the Lord told me go to that house Mungu akaniambia nenda kwenye ile nyumba So I just put my sandals on Nikavaa tu viatu vyangu And I was just walking down the road Nikatembea barabarani I'm just wondering why I'm going to that house Nina nilikuwa najiuliza kwa nini naenda kwenye ile nyumba I don't know why I'm going there Sijui kwa nini naenda pale So anyway I just went there Nikafika pale I greeted the brother Nikamsalimia ndugu I greeted his wife Nikamsalimia mke wake I said how are you doing Nikasema mnaendeleaje Pastor we doing very well Mchungaji tuendea vizuri na mambo nao tufundishe ni ya kweli. Nikasema Bwana ameniambia tu nije hapa. Je, kuna kitu chochote mnahitaji kujua? Wakasema hapana. Hatuna chochote cha kuongea. wewe nenda, mimi nitaenda pale afu nitarudi. Wakasema hawana cha kuongea. Nikambia sasa kwa nini? Sijui kwa nini niko hapa mwenyewe. Lakini mgonjwa ni waombe. Nikawashika. Na nikaanza kuomba. Nilikuwa naomba na kuomba. Kulikuwa na uwepo fulani uliokuja. Yule nduga alikuwa anatetemeka. Dada alikuwa analia. Ndugu alipofungua macho yake. Aliona nguzo ya moto imesimama. Alikuwa anatetemeka. Nipo maliza kuomba. Nikasema Mungu akubariki. Na nikaondoka. Nikasema Bwana kwani ulinipeka? Ulinituma kwenda pale. Jumapili asubuhi. That brother came with his wife to church. Yule ndugu akaja na mke wake kanisani. And he said the reason I am here. Na kusema sababu kwa nini niko hapa? Because the pillar of fire came with the pastor to my house. Ana akasema I saw the pillar of fire with my own eyes. Akasema sababu niko hapa ni kwa sababu nguzo ya moto ilikuja na mchungaji nyumbani kwangu nikaiona kwa macho yangu Now why do we say the pillar of fire is only for the prophet? Kwa nini unasema nguzo ya moto ni kwa ajili ya nabii pekee yake? I'll read a quotation for you tomorrow it's for every one of us. Nitakusomea nuku kesho ni kwa ajili yetu sote. God bless you. Mungu awabariki. Shalom saints God bless you. Mungu awabariki. Oh my. Thank I'm you Lord. Mchungaji karibu. I'm sorry to take your time. Samahani nimechukua muda wako. We are under the seventh seal. Tuko lakini tuko chini ya mwili wa saba. No mwili wa saba hauna wakati. Hallelujah.